Hello, welcome back to another episode of Collider Jedi Council. I'm Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, and this is our Star Wars show. But not only is it our Star Wars show, it is the last Star Wars show of 2015, and what a year of Star Wars it was. And this is the episode we're going to break down The Force Awakens. If you haven't seen the movie already, go and see it. Put this on pause, come back, and then watch it, because it is going to be a full breakdown, not a review, a breakdown, analysis, speculation, the whole deal on The Force Awakens, and what a counsel I have to do it today. First, on my right, he... Yep. On my left, I guess. Uh, my right. On my right, he is Boba Schnepp. What are you doing, Dennis? <laughs> Boba Schnepp is on the right. There he is. <laughs> what's up, Boba? Whoa, what's going on? That was just a little bit of my force powers. I was jumping around. You didn't see me for a second. All of a sudden, I became Ken Knapsack. What's up? <laughs> so happy to be here. We were going to like really get into a lot of detail on the film. So, like you said, if you haven't seen this movie, we don't want to hear any, yeah, I didn't know I didn't see the movie yeah, spoilers, because we're going to be getting into all the details, and that means all spoilers. So, if you haven't seen it, Come back after you've seen the movie, and then, we'll, then you'll get, know what we're talking about. Um, by the way, Obi-John Kenobi will be here in just a second, eh, maybe in like half an hour or so, but he will be joining us. But who better for his first time finally on the show and in the history of Jedi Council, the only person to ever have two nicknames, he is the Sarlacc pit boss Kylo Ken Napsok. Wow, that's a lot. It this is, a is lot. it. This has been a long time coming. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, join the council going full Sith with you guys, and what a time to do it. What a great time to be a Star Wars fan, right? Yeah, yeah. it's pretty awesome. It's good to finally have you on yeah. the show. We've been it's talking good. about it. We've been joking about it for a long time. Yeah. There he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, all right. Oh. Obi-John <laughs> Kenobi. And also joining us on the council, it is Obi-John Kenobi, John Campia. I made it. Sorry, happy holidays, everybody. It's kind of busy around here today. Uh, Jonathan will be adjusting his camera. Have we talked about how Ray's not Luke's daughter yet? We have not talked okay, about good. any of that. Okay, so we'll we didn't even mention Ray Ora, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no. no. Um, so Ray like, Ora might be Luke's daughter. I'm we, not sure. We don't know. So this is going to be a full discussion on The Force Awakens. Like we said, make sure that you, if you haven't seen it already, go and see it. Um, so we're going to do some breakdowns. We're also going to take a lot of emails from you guys. You guys have submitted a lot of emails. We picked out a bunch to go over. But before we do that, I wanted to talk about, we always talk about books and stuff um, and things that we're either we're reading or playing. And look at it. Boba Schnapp hold it up. Look at that bad boy right there. That is the Art of the Force Awakens. I just received this book the other day. And is this book phenomenal or what? Schnapp, you, you were reading it in like a... Barnes Co and Noble. Copyright. Yeah. Don't show too much. Okay. Copyright. Oh, yeah, it is yeah, yeah. so incredible. Let me just show you the awesome inside cover when you flip it open you're like bam yeah, that's pretty Falcon. awesome and that's this well, is an incredible book you know what's so great I would about take it the dust cover off that bad boy it's yeah. that's so a beautiful good. cover what's so good about this book is that it details not only like all the art in general but like the progression of how it all came all the artists and the, the submissions as far they, they didn't know for a long time who kylo ren was going to be they thought it was just going to be they called him the jedi killer for a long time so there's all that like test um, art that came out that we, we didn't know, the concept art that we didn't know what it was and it, it got leaked it, a lot of it came and you'll see it in this book it, it for star wars fans in general is everybody i know maybe not everybody has it is everybody thinking about getting it ken oh, yeah. this book yeah i'm getting my hands on anything i just ordered the novel i got the visual encyclopedia definitely going to get this after i steal it from you yeah you will <laughs> well, john doesn't have to be this book's going to live here it's in the office yeah, it's in yeah. here yeah, that's totally a great thing around here yeah. what's christians is mine that's right yeah that's <laughs> yeah, true um and i have your set okay so let's <laughs> let, let, let's uh, let's get into it here um I will, let's just go right into the opening of the movie because there's so much to talk about. And I wanted to start on, I mean, even just the way that it opens. And the first thing a lot of people are talking about when you have, we didn't know, we see that the stormtroopers are kind of the first shot you see, and that's the introduction of the stormtroopers. But it really gets into the meat of this, this opening scene is Poe and Max von Sydow, Lord Santeca. Lord Santeca. Lord Santeca. Who the hell is Lor Santeca? That is one of the big questions. Is like some people are still thinking maybe is he Kanan from Rebels? I don't think that's the case. Why did he use the Force? He makes reference to the fact that he knew Princess Leia and always kind of sees her as royalty. Then it, it, it seems as if, well, we know that he knew he knows Kylo Ren. Um, he was part of Luke's academy. It seems like Ken. Who do you think? Tech yeah, is. Uh, he's not a Jedi. He's not a Force user. He's a follower of the Force. He was called the Vicar 
in early, uh, uh, you know, the art, the development yeah. of the movie. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, that was his name, was the vicar. So he's more of like, he, he, he attend, attends the Church of the Force, okay. which apparently is something you can do. Um, so he's got a lot of history. He definitely knows, and, and they, they, he's traveled the galaxy a lot, and he's, as he says in the movie, seen a lot of things. Right. Um, so he definitely is involved. I think that's going to unfold, but it's, I don't think it's anyone we know yet. Okay, do you think, where do you think we're going to, learn more about him like where do you think you will, will it be books will it be movies will it be episode eight john where do you think we're gonna learn more about Tekka? Um, if anything. Well, I mean, there's already been some write-up stuff. I mean, you can read in some of the material already that he was, he actually initially helped Luke. Right. He was assisting Luke in trying to find uh, the original Jedi Temple. I think the, the more important thing is we don't need to know any more about him. I mean, I'm absolutely certain in some of the novels we'll probably get into stuff and see more and learn more about him in, in that stuff. But I think in typical good J.J. Abrams fashion, which he doesn't like to waste a lot of screen time, it's like he, what Max Van Cito's character's need was in the film was fulfilled. And then they moved on. And because of that, I don't, I'm suspecting we're probably not going to see any more of him in the movies. So they might use him as fodder to explore more, certainly in those initial days of trying to help Luke find the original Jedi Temple and things like that. Probably get into that in the novels, but in the movies, I think his role's done now. I just want a Max von Sydow action figure. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, you'll get one. <laughs> Can we finally get yeah. one of those? Well, Absolutely. Snoke one though too. We'll get into yeah. Snoke a little bit too. But do you, do you, were you surprised, Schnepp, how fast? Because you and I are big Flash Gordon fans. Sure. I mean, big Max von Sydow fans. Yeah. Ming the Merciless, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, of course. Now, were you Death shocked at how fast he went out? Because there were um, rumors. Remember, we thought old Boba Fett. Sure. We thought Kanan. Yeah, there was art where he's got a cyborg guy. Yeah, he's toast. You, know, you never know where he's right. going to show up. Is he going to show up earlier or later? He's right in the beginning, and he gets like flash fried by Kylo Ren yeah. really quick. They have a little back and forth. So Damn you it, do... I almost shut him up for spoilers. I know, right? I've got to retune my head. I can say whatever I want, Captain. Han Solo dies. Let him lose. Let him lose. Yeah, that's right. No, we addressed this while you were like, Spoiler monster is here. We are like, we can spoil it, son. So... Yeah, this guy dies. Kylo Ren kills him. Yeah. <laughs> now, that conversation that they <laughs> have, though, too. I was going to say, the yeah. character himself, though, I think you're absolutely 100% right. He was there to introduce the movie and to yeah. pass along to Poe some of this key information that then becomes, you know, Luke is missing. What is this thing? Right. The droid's got it. It's got it. It's, it, it moves the story forward. It propels it forward so that he also says, I knew I knew her. I knew Princess Leia when before she was a general. Right. I also know who Kylo Ren is. So it, it, it creates these connective fibers right away at the beginning and you don't need him anymore. So. Right. Well, I thought he also introduced it well. And I like that they didn't hide it. You know, we, we, they were going to let us know right away about Kylo Ren. Like, oh, he's got family ties. And even when they finally reveal that he's Han's kid, they do it. Snoke does it quick. Mm -hmm. But that that recognition between the two of them, like, and I agree with you. I think that in books we'll probably learn some more stuff, too, yeah. about m maybe even seeing. Because I think eventually you're going to have something more about the what happened with the Ben Solo turn. Like when that you you've got it like and, oh, yeah. and I don't know what book that's going to be, but that's I would key. assume that tech is going to show up in the whether that the book or flashbacks, whatever it is to explain that relationship. So the other one that I want to talk about in that scene is Poe, because he is the first main character that you are introduced to. Like you I mean, you see him. You know, it's Oscar Isaac, but there's something about what is Poe going to be like? Because we all thought maybe he'd be like the next Han Solo type. You got what he was like. This guy believes in the rebellion or the resistance. He believes in what he's doing. He is a great fighter pilot. He is there to accomplish his mission. And I thought just in that scene and everything he did with BB-8, and I love the relationship with him and BB-8. Oh, yeah. Um, but everything that I saw from Poe, I knew what kind of character I was getting right away. Now, you see Poe, the first time you see the movie, what did you take away from, from Poe and watching that scene? What did you think about what, kind of what his role is? Uh 100% driven, 100% loyal, 100% into what he's doing, accomplishing his mission. I felt like the way Oscar Isaacs uh, portrayed Poe was great because he had a little bit of that cavalier, like, you know, a real tough, not tough guy, right. but like, what are you going to do? Capable. You're not going to get, yeah, right. you're not going to get anything out of me. Like, yeah. And it, ultimately he did, you know, right. Kylo right. was able to use whatever his force powers is like, it's inside the droid, this and that, you know. But, you know, Poe put up a really good fight. I think I, lo I love the character of Poe. You know, it's, yeah. I think it's uh, somebody you can get behind. I also think from a movie-making standpoint, Oscar Isaac and what they did with that one scene set the tone for the movie. The serious, 
Kylo Ren, and then a joke that was not forced. It was organic. You talk first. Yeah. I talk first. Right. Right. I was in right away. Oh, here's what they're going to do. We're going to have some fun, but it's also going to be a Star Wars film. Right. And I think that that was a key part of that scene. It gave him personality. It took away a lot of the stuff that we, you know, we've know, we complained about with the prequels, too, that nobody really had a lot of personality. Mm -hmm. That gave right. us personality. Or any. Yeah, oh, yeah. but it gave us personality a, a right Instantly, away. Yeah. And, that, and that tone, like you're saying, it set, it set it up to know what we're in for. Okay, that you knew. You still felt the threat. Like Kylo Ren's staring at him, but he's like, "Look, I'm. I'm this is who I am. I'm gonna crack a joke." But John, you see this opening here on Jakku with with Poe. What did you think of Poe when you first seen him? Um, that f the first scene, there's not a lot to glean. Really, that was more about what we were hearing from Max von Sydow. That, that's more about that. But once we moved outside of the tent, the whole thing. The, Do I talk to her? It's hard with the math. Blah, blah. Right. What struck me initially and what state which for me only got more and more reinforced as we went on through the movie was this that poe dameron and i mean this in the very best way possible he is a complete amalgamation of han solo and star lord he's an amalgamation yeah. of those two characters he's got a lot of the he's got the on the surface the carefree kind of whatever of, of, of a han solo he's got the wit of a star lord but underneath that in han solo is, is also a deadly seriousness and a lot of heart and yeah. a lot of heart and you saw that as well in poe so as soon as he said that first of all i felt relief because look as much as we've been looking forward to the movie right the stain of the prequels still washes over me, right? right? So I'm sitting in there and I'm thinking, please let this be a good opening crawl. Boom, oh, okay, it's an awesome opening crawl. Then, okay, now we're actually gonna hear Dalek, like, blah, blah, blah. And when the first joke came, was he going to fart right. in Max Van Cito's tent and go, sorry about that? Right. Or was he gonna go, do you talk first to I talk? Ah, that was funny. Right. And it just set the tone for me. Right. It instantly made me bring my walls down. It made me feel relaxed. It's right. like, Okay, they're on We're the right path hands. here. Yeah. yeah, so it was so, it, not just for who Poe is, to me, the way Poe introduced the movie was so vitally important to how I was able to then enjoy the rest of it. I was also going to say the way the way Poe like told BB-8 to go without him, and right. almost saying, look, I'm going to get captured. So it was this kind of... You need to go. Yeah, yeah. you need to go. And it's like that emotion was there. It wasn't that kind of wooden di dialogue delivery that was yeah. so much all of the prequels. Like just that opening scene with those characters and then the introduction of Kylo Ren, how he can freeze a force blast. That was great. Like, like all that stuff. You yeah. saw his power. You yeah. saw the maliciousness kill everyone. Right. You saw the evil... The evil uh, with the first order uh, just they're relentless well everything that they would do and i think that you know the the other thing with with bb8 when poe gives him the map and first of all, when we talk about the map the facts how how we do we remember talk how tekka got the map like, how did he get it do you, you have an idea uh, i don't think we've heard yet just in his travels do you, so we don't he know he and maz went to some yard sale and picked up some pretty cool <laughs> stuff. but is, was luke in contact with him do you think too i, or? I think at some point i think there could be something like, there. that to me is interesting we haven't really no one's really been exploring that how tekka got the actual map and then poe gives it to bb8 now this to me like you guys said um when that joke hit you're like okay this is the tone we're going for as soon as poe gave bb8 that the, the information on the map I already prepared myself. I said, okay, they're doing an homage to episode four here. Right. It's the same way that Princess Leia gave R2. Yep. I said, okay. Kneeling I, down. Yeah, I said, it, okay. Yep. I said, okay, so let me look at, let me look at, this is going to be an homage, very similar to what I just saw with with uh, Ryan Coogler's Creed with Rocky. There's going to be similarities with the original, and I'm okay with that. As long as they make these characters stand on their own, there's new things, then let give me an homage. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. And it turned out the entire movie's an homage to episode four, and I was cool with that. And that, to me, set my prepared. Did anybody else feel that way? going into yeah, that straight up the minute he was like i'm gonna give you this thing yeah. and a little thing popped out i was like that's exactly like it but they're flipping it up they're changing the script and so much of of this new force awakens echoes star wars episode four but you know flips it and flops it and flips it and flops it and so that everything still feels new even right. though we're kind of following a very similar storyline i mean i thought it was a, a really smart thing that map i think luke gave the Tech. max von Cito yeah. guy and you know, uh, R two D two. The the you have this, and then R two has this. Right, he's playing at the, the game. same time, right. and then they just burst. That's what I think. Yeah, I don't want to jump ahead to Ray's vision, but I think that's very very key to the story. And I think that I interpret that along with my uh, broadcast partner Joseph Crimshaw on Four Center. We both interpret that as Luke saying, "Hey, when the time has come, R two, this is what you're going to do. Go now. I got to stay here." And I think it all kind of ties totally. in. I think he, Luke had a plan. Luke I, had a plan. It's, it's the same way that he had his plan in Return of the Jedi. 
Uh, he had a very, you know, with, yeah, with yeah, totally. he the way he put together that plan. He's always been a guy that sets together plans, so that's that's a good point as well. Um, now moving ahead, we we also inside of all that stuff that we saw with Von Sydow, and then Von Sydow ultimately gets taken out by Kylo Ren. The first time we see Kylo Ren, like you brought up, when he freezes that blast. But the big moment there, what some could say, is the awakening for at least Finn was when Finn notices his fellow trooper go down to Oscar Isaac, who takes him out, the blood on the helmet, and then he sees in that moment between him and Kylo Ren. And then this is what really ter- puts our story into motion. But what did you think of, of that moment with Finn and the fact that he didn't shoot? And Phasma, because I know you you had a pro- you, you didn't like the Captain Phasma name. but how, And I know she wasn't really too, But did you like the look and everything? You're going back, back about two years I'm now. I'm going back two so years. Two Captain years. Phasma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, my biggest disappointment is that they still underuse Phasma. I think a lot of people have that. Yeah. Only because it's like Boba Fett. It look, she looks so cool. You want more. That's kind of right. our personal expectations exceeding what they had already had planned. And Will and Christie's That's so great. Their, yeah, yeah. And that was the thing too. That's not our. That's not their fault. That's our fault for, for going. I want that cool thing to do cool things. Um, I would have liked a little bit more with Phasma and Finn early on. Uh, maybe her being more antagonistical with him to pay that off later. But but that whole scene and it just kind of shows the brutality of the First Order now. And and it's it's real now. I don't think you know other than the destruction of Alderaan. Can you think in, in New Hope and, and the killing of, of teddy bears and Jedi? Yeah. Um, something so brutal. Right. And, and and blood, yeah, we've seen blood in Star Wars, but that thing, the blood, that's, yeah. that's graphic stuff we haven't really seen before. Yeah, well, it's very definitely. Well, I mean, Phasma, Phasma, I'll go one step further. Phasma wasn't just underused, she was misused. Yeah. Um, like, like one of my, my biggest problem with Phasma, and I think many times in the film, she's she's like a cold, almost administrator, you know, in many ways. And I, and I dug it. I got what right. they're going for that. But if you're setting us up by giving us all the toys and the masks and everything out, and you're putting her so prominently in right. things, what Boba Fett never did was he never folded under the slightest amount of pressure. You know, that whole scene where it's like, lower the shields, Phasma, or we'll shoot you. All right, but you're making a mistake. It's like, really? Right. Phasma's doing that? And I'm not going to steal your thunder. But Schnepp brought, came up with a a great simple fix that would have made Phasma, it would have taken 30 seconds, but it would have made Phasma way more relevant to the film. I'll let you describe. Oh, we, were just, we were just talking about uh, all of our mutual uh, disappointment with Phasma, and it was like, if they just swapped out that one stormtrooper, it was like, traitor, yeah. and made that Phasma. Yeah. Phasma Finn fighting him. Fighting Phasma right. with totally the lightsaber. Totally different impression of the character yeah. then. And then she gets shot, but she doesn't get killed. I would have just given that character just that extra flavor that all of us wanted see, to see. Absolutely. Raise I, the stakes. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you on that. The only thing that changes my opinion on it just a little bit is because that new book that just came out before The Awakening. And what it's set up with Phasma and Finn is that Phasma has looked at him as thinking that he could be one of the best stormtroopers of all time. She's almost like kind of protecting him at some point. So when she's looking at have your gun have your blaster checked for inspection because there's no possible way that you could have not shot. You would have shot, obviously. So get it checked out. She's kind of overlooking him and wanting him to be great. So I don't think they wanted to have them have a fight because that's not the relationship But yet. But he's become a traitor He's a traitor, though. I know. So then I, wouldn't she I, be the greatest mad? janitor so. of all time in the <laughs> first order? <laughs> I, know. I, 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 I know. I get that. I know. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, though, I think that their story is yet to... I, I think there's going to be a lot more with those two. I think that... Especially where they go and what happens later on at the at the end of this movie, I think it's set up for Finn and Phasma to have. A you had kind of said maybe maybe Phasma and Finn mean the new Fett and Solo across the galaxy. Maybe they're chasing battle. That's, I, I can uh, buy into that's that. That's what I kind of think. All right, then we're going to go to you guys. Um, you guys have sent in emails. We've we've picked out a bunch of them. The first email comes in here from Newman Brown. Newman Brown writes. Hey, guys, with all the speculation about who Ray is, during the movie, did you notice the first shots of her dwelling? It had a shot of what looked like a handmade doll dressed as maybe an X-Wing pilot. And she was wearing an old X-Wing fighter helmet the first time she encountered BB-8. Could these be clues to her backstory? Thanks, guys, and keep up the good work. Um, Yeah, I did notice that doll the second time I saw it, for sure. And the helmet... We've been talking about this a lot over the last right. couple of days. You're thinking maybe that that helmet's not necessarily just a rebel helmet. That, that could actually be Luke's helmet. Yeah, and this is from uh, nerds on Twitter. Like, I was just, like, flipping through stuff, and some, somebody's like, yo, Schnepp, this could be the Red 5 helmet, son. I've seen the movie five times. Like, I've only seen it twice, so I haven't been able to look at that helmet in detail yet. If it has the markings of Luke's helmet, I don't know. 
like John was saying, it could just be a, a fighter helmet from the war on Jakku that she just picked up because all the rest of the stuff she has is scraps. She's living inside an at at. So that's pretty cool. I don't know. But if it was, if that was like kind of handed down to her, like maybe she had like a little action figure of her dad. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like it could be possible. I, uh, I uh, spent a lot of time on the couch alone last night reading the visual encyclopedia where I'm going to be for the next 40 years alone there reading it. Uh, it is just listed as a generic X-Wing pilot name. Interesting. Excellent. Okay. Uh, not that that couldn't be a red herring. Right. You know, this I, is, uh, uh, we love it, building these myths, but. It makes as much sense to me as saying, hey, she's living in an ad ad. That means General Veers is her grandfather. <laughs> you know, I'm it, buying that. Right. Yeah, I, I, General Veers? I mean, yeah. like, if you understand, especially if you read Lost Stars, and I know we constantly pimp Lost Stars on this show. As, I know you, should. as you should, yeah. But if, you know, when you read that, there's a significant battle. It wasn't just one Star Destroyer and one or two x wing There's a significant battle over Jakku. There's lots of rebel and Imperial, old rebel and Imperial, so she's living in an ad ad. She, she's got an old dusty helmet, and Luke didn't fight at the Battle of Jakku. Right. So, I mean, there kind of goes that theory. So... Now, I don't think that, you know, there are some people believe that she is Luke's daughter. I don't believe she is. I don't believe the fact that that wasn't Luke's helmet means she's not his daughter. Right. That has nothing right. to do with the argument whatsoever. Well, right. the doll, though, the doll was interesting. Was also, what we've learned about Rey is that she likes, she, she loves hearing about the myths and she loves history. Like, even when she hears it's Han Solo, she lights up and she wants to know about. I never met a resistance fighter before. Like, she wants to be part of it, obviously, with the helmet. Well, Jakku is littered with the story of the rebellion. Right. Yes. Empire. And that again up. goes yeah. back to episode four as to where, you know, Luke wanted to be part of it. He wanted yeah. to be. And, and that's why I actually am on even more than I ever was the Rey is his daughter i think it's it's set up so much now with her wanting to be a pie and, and like you're saying this could be even maybe a total misdirect as where it's like you they want you to think so much that it's luke's daughter that maybe it isn't but i i just happen to think it is because of these moments she's got that i don't know necessarily know if that's luke that doll but everything she has are these part of the these fights and battles so i, I like the little details that they put all over this movie well, yeah, and I, I just love that scene. The, the Ray and Jakku stuff, for whatever reason, I really uh, just love it, and it's part of my favorite stuff. And just her battle, uh, her her role, her theme early on is acceptance of, of, of who she is, and I think she's daydreaming about flying. She's daydreaming, but that ship going off, she mentioned she's never been off planet, but she refuses to leave the planet because mm-hmm. she believes her family's coming back. That scene of just her eating next to the Adat has a lot of emotional resonance to me, just who that character is, and, and uh, her daydreams, her goals, but also her her fears yeah um i was gonna say i I just love the introduction like you said of of the character ray they really took their time i mean the movie rolls like a monster once it really gets started but it has that beautiful like a raptor like it rolls like a (laughs) raptor i didn't say that you said that but uh i like the the slow build that they they give it they they have that you know the tension with with Poe, and then of course Finn, and the escape, and then once you get to Ray, you get a breath, you yeah, get a little bit of time to stay on Jakku and, and get to know this character. And you know what? Also, I, I have found like the first time I came out of it, um, and I even said this to Dennis, I was like, you know, even though the music is obviously John Williams, and it's it, the music in the prequels and the music in the original trilogy is just so overwhelming and it's the characters in the movie and i said you know the the music in this movie was was a little underwhelming um i found myself especially with ray's theme falling in love with the music a little bit more and even john was listening to the kylo ren theme the other day and he yeah. goes, and he says to me he's like hey what's this uh, and i knew it instantly i had, at that time i'd only seen the movie once and he's like L- what's this and i go kylo ren he's like yep and I was like, wait a minute, this music actually affected me a lot more than I thought mm-hmm. it did. And when I went back and watched it a second time and saw the music when Ray first appears, it's this tone of like loneliness and like, you know, just, but you still, you're supposed to feel for her there and you do. And it's also because of her performance and everything that she's done. But that piece of music does that. And then we get into what she does. She goes and she's, she's, she's a scavenger. She gets these parts. And then what's, what's Simon Pegg's character's name? Uh, Unkar Plut. Oh, Plat, right? Plat. Is it Plut? Plat? Yeah, Whatever. it's something disgusting. Uh, yeah, but th- that, <laughs> yeah. all that scene with the portions and, and, and setting up really what she's all about. And in the novel, they actually they explain this really well, too, as, as far as what she does and how much like she's kind of fighting for her living there. But what do you think of, of, of that scene with her just kind of changing stuff up and the, the setup of her being the scavenger? 
Oh, I thought it was great. I thought it was kind of like achingly beautiful, the loneliness climbing around this the Star Destroyer. And again, it just set up her so well. Um, I, I just I just love this character. It's really one of my top five favorite Star Wars characters because there's, there's just a lot to it, and it's fun. And the, the journey, I think Daisy really did an amazing job yeah. all the way from beginning to end. I love some of the work she did in the final uh, stuff we can get to later. Um, and, and the music, you're right. Uh, I You and I had the same reaction. Like, hey, what, are, what are Williams asleep at the wheel here? There's, no, right. there's no Duel of the Fates. There's no music video. Uh, I've, I've had the soundtrack in my ears a few bit, yeah. a few weeks now, a few days now, and it's 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 there. Yeah. It's how, there. It's how do different. you feel it's about the music? I'm curious cause, because you and I kind of had similar thoughts coming out of the. Except I loved it. Yeah. Um, and, and here's why: there are two different types of soundtracks you can get. The soundtracks will be the catchy tunes that you can just listen to on its own in your car. Duel of the Fates, the Imperial mm-hmm. March, the opening uh, fanfare, all that kind of stuff. But. Often, really great soundtrack does what really great visual effects do. You don't notice them. Yep. When a soundtrack right, is right. really great, they, they just uh, soak into the scene and heighten the scene because of what they're doing. And when that's really happening well, you often don't notice. Until you try to watch a scene again with the music off, and then it's like, whoa, then it's a completely different experience. For me, you're right. There was no Duel of the Fates. There's no Imperial March. And that would have been cool to have. But I actually think overall, I actually like this soundtrack for the purposes of the movie yeah. more than I did when Duel of the Fates was mm-hmm. there. So, yeah, I actually quite like it. John, you're right. And you take a journey. When you get to that final song, which I believe is called The Final Steps yep. in the end of the fair, it combines a lot of things. I keep saying it's got Ray's theme. It's got this these strings that are literally taking up the steps. Mm-hmm. And that journey, the soundtrack, like you say, it, it comes to a fruition there. And it's a, it's a really an emotional, wonderful piece. Yeah. I think what John Williams was doing is because he's been in charge of all of these movies so far, and he's created, you know, themes that we all know, you know, yeah. could, we can hum every yeah. theme basically. And with Duel of the Fates, that was really pushed. You know, the marketing of the that. Yeah. And it's a great. It's it a literally great theme. was a music video. Yeah, yeah, it's an amazing theme. I think the subtlety of all of the music that he did for this Force Awakens is embedded with all the themes that we already know, right. and then. That's that awakening type of thing. It was powerful when the new yeah. when the music the familiar music came in after hearing the music that we were being introduced mm-hmm. to. When the old music hit, it was very powerful. Definitely. So and he was able to weave that together. Yeah, yeah. and you know another another character that we mentioned briefly before too that everyone really responded to and was curious how this was going to work because you know they could have went CGI with it and thank God they did. It was BB-8. Um, the when when Ray runs into BB-8 and rescues him. The dialogue that they have, and I like how she he, she's able to understand him, and and you know they have the, well, don't follow me, and he does like why he latches on to her. It, it's uh, it, uh, you know we we'll say this a, a bunch of times throughout this this show here today is the parallel again when Luke got R two and C three PO, and obviously setting up a relationship that's going to last for a while. But John, you know you hear it with BB eight and that scene, uh, and then really starting us on the journey out of Jakku is once. Ray is introduced to BB-8. What did you think of BB-8 first and foremost, and then kind of take us through where she goes with him until they're ultimately, you know, meet up with with Finn? No, B, one of the great things about BB-8, and you didn't know whether they're going to really be able to pull this off, and one of the first things I said coming out of the movie, might even been to you, was the movie fulfilled the promise of BB-8, of what BB-8 could be. We got all the marketing. We talked about Phasma and the negative side of okay. the promise that we got of Phasma didn't quite live up to it. But the promise of BB-8, they over-delivered. Mm-hmm. I mean, right away, you see character and charisma in a character that does not speak. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really know how yeah. you pull that off, but they did it. Um, the whole scene, like first of all, in the Falcon, when he's trying to decide who to go with, and he's looking at the one person back at the other person right, back right. over here, mm-hmm. and then it's his little blowtorch, thumbs up thing. They they imbued him with so much personality that he absolutely, I can't remember what the discussion was, but we said he was adorable. Yeah. Just adorable. You fall in love with this droid. Yeah. And I, that to me is only heightened by the relationship, because you figure from the marketing, oh, it's him and Ray. Nah, it's him and Poe. And the relationship between him him and Poe, which was far more developed than the relationship between Han and Ben, um, but the relationship between Poe and BB-8 was actually great. I love the way they interacted. We didn't get a lot of it, but I loved it, and I never would have thought. I thought my wife would have come out of this movie, loving BB-8, I knew that. 
I didn't think I'd be coming out of the movie buzzing about BB-8, and I was. It was just a a triumph. I'm very cynical about what they try to do with droids. You know, I know you love Chopper the the Fart Bot on Rebels, but I think sometimes, (laughs) you know, uh, I've come to... You don't like Chopper? I've come come to love Chopper just early on. It was like, I get it. It's a sassy droid. uh, But I... I, So I'm cynical. And, John, I'm like you. I was going in going, this this could be... And I I fell in love with BB-8, man. Yeah. Like, it was pitch perfect, much like a lot of the things in the movie, other than the Ben and Han backstory. (laughs) I think with BB-8, you brought up Poe, I think the introduction of BB-8 and Poe and their relationship immediately yeah, makes right you yeah. feel for that droid because right. he's forced to not only does he have this plan, the plans that are super important to deliver to General Leia, but his friend has to, he has to leave his friend behind and go out into the desert. And then he's right. like almost captured and like, then he becomes friends with Ray and like just the way that they give him that personality, it's a rolling ball with a weird thing, but the way it reacts, you know, really, like, yeah, you know, it's yeah, a, yeah. just what they did is so magical. And you really care about that that robot. You so, just really some do. Some of the best acting in this movie is BB-8. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> true. And that's yeah. not an yeah. assault against that's, the no, acting. No, no, no. no. And, and you know, it really makes you think. I mean, put this in context. I know your first reaction will be to recoil from this, but think about this for a second. It really, even throughout the original trilogy, Luke, with some very rare exceptions, he looks at and treats 3PO and R2-D2 as his property right. in many ways. Right. I mean, he'll have some nice little exchange with R2 on Dagobah, but for the most part, it's like, I need you to go do this, do this. I need you to do this, right. this, and this. With Poe and BB-8, it was instantly, that's his friend. That you, yeah. The way he knelt out with him, don't worry, man, you'll be okay. He's concerned about yeah. his well-being his buddy, yeah. and yeah. all this kind of stuff, and it was just really nice. Well, Poe, yeah. I mean, uh, BB-8 also, when, when you know, and we'll get into it in a second, but when, he, when, he, when Finn tells him that he's dead, Oh yeah, yeah the yeah. head, all oh, that stuff. And like, everybody in the audience was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah." It's like that scene with a baby Ewok in Return of the Jedi, where you see a little baby <laughs> Ewok, and everybody's like, "Oh, it's so it, cute." It was. It works like and, that. You know, and jumping back to Poe here too. Let's let, we'll talk about how we, the, how his personality just stayed exactly how it was in that opening scene when he's being interrogated. And so he's being interrogated. The stormtroopers come in. And he look. They beat the crap out of him. Right. He's not breaking. And then they send in Kylo Ren. And then we get to Kylo see Kylo Ren will break you. Kylo, and he does. And and the way and how bummed he was when he gave up the information because yeah. that's what his mission was. His mission was not to fail the resistance and he couldn't resist, but he, but he, he did, you know? And, and so it, it, the fact that he had to, that, that happened with, with Kylo Ren and Poe, and I really saw we, we began to get that vision of what Kylo Ren is going to be in this trilogy in general. You saw that menacing side. We learned a little bit more that he's kind of like I think you said a basket case, um, but we got that. From, uh, but what did you think of that scene overall? Of the interrogation scene, yeah, uh, uh, loved it. It's great. It's also it also gives us our big baddie moment with Ren because right. what I love that he did with Ren and it's a further discussion is this is a character who again has a mask and it's a theme of acceptance and he is trying to not go to the light side. That's kind of a reverse. He's working very. Everyone else is like trying to avoid the dark side. He's trying to avoid the light side. Mm-hmm. And so that is our one pure Ren moment early on too with the holding the lightsaber uh, right. or the blaster. Um, so I, I did love that scene, and, and, and you get a lot of Poe's essence, and it, it, it comes off, i got to say this carefully because I love what John Boyega did, but it comes off, Poe comes off a little bit more naturally. It just might be Oscar Isaac as a more mm-hmm. experienced actor, where it, it, it was organic enough in that scene. You're being tortured, but you're still going to have kind of that right. snappy comeback. Um, what was the issue with Boyega? There's no issue. That's oh. why i got to say it carefully, just that sometimes... He, uh, it, it's he's kind of got the quip quotient, quotient right, going, right, right. and sometimes that you know, like the boyfriend comment was one of my you know you got a boyfriend, you got a boyfriend, totally normal in that right. world. I'm sure there's sex and dating in the Star Wars right. galaxy, but it, it was like that's what you're worried Pretty about awful, right now, a right. little bit. But I love what Finn is and what they've done with the character. I want to make sure that's clear. I'm not you know, and the fact Finn. that Finn and the, and that's when, when like you were saying before, Steph, once you realize you're out, you're out, and you find the way you can get out of that thing, and he. Does and what better way to get out of of the first order than to rescue a prisoner from the resistance? And can we draw that direct parallel to the original Star Wars, where he takes his helmet off after yeah. rescuing Princess Leia? I mean Poe, and says, "I'm here to rescue you." It's yeah. literally a line right out of Star Wars, but they flipped it once again. They switched it up and made it different. Yeah. But you get that the little flavor of a recall. Yeah. And I thought their back and forth was great. And yeah, I really believe, like, where he's like, don't be afraid. And he's like, well, I'm not. That's for me. I'm talking to myself. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's really literally like, we, a lot of people uh, brought this up. I think we were talking about it before we started the show yeah. about Finn and how he's like, well, how could he just, you know, he says he doesn't want to kill anybody, but then he kills a bunch of stormtroopers. Once he, once he realized that he couldn't, in cold blood, murder a bunch of villagers because Kylo Ren said, kill everyone, and all these other stormtroopers. 
killed everyone, he realized he couldn't do that. And this was his first time right. that he was called upon as a storm. Like universal soldier. Yeah to, yeah, to do that, he realized I can't be a part of this anymore. I'm getting out. And once you make that decision, you're getting out no matter what. It's life or death. So he's in. He doesn't know how to fly a ship. He rescues this guy. He, he doesn't know if he's going to be part of the resistance or not. He just wants to get right. out of this thing that he's been stuck in since he was stolen as a kid. And they had great chemistry, both Poe and... Uh, we probably could have used a little more of them together on screen. And right. They, uh, they, they had a really good chemistry. Right. And, and, just yeah. with, and I think you're going to see a lot of moments with them in <laughs> yeah, episode eight. I think, so. I think the two of those guys are going to be together. They were great. I think that that's what they developed. I think they developed that, that relationship in I the beginning. I think they're the new Han and Luke. I, I agree with you. I think that they're going to have a lot of chemistry and a lot more... Like, as where Ray's going to go off and have her adventure with... With Luke, those two guys are going to have their own adventure because, it, it, as we know, Poe po really resonated with fans. People really enjoyed yeah. what he did, and he and he kicks ass for the resistance. So it's going to make sense. They're going to send him on another mission, and this time it's going to be with his buddy. They have a great relationship, the two of them. Um, their chemistry was great, but the chemistry between both Finn and Ray I thought was amazing. So yeah. Finn gets to Jakku, he, and, and he, the, the funny scene where he's like, water, water, and everyone's ignoring him, and then <laughs> that big thing knocks him out of the <laughs> yeah. way, and he's going to help R Ridley, and she just kicks the crap out of uh, Platt's skies. Then, then we set up, then we start to realize these are our two main characters that we're going to be following yeah. throughout this adventure. What did you think of both uh, Boyega and Ridley's chemistry together? The chemistry was really good. It, was, it came off... It started kind of rocky, okay. though, I'll say. Um, the, the meeting on Jakku was fine. It was rushed because the environment was rushed. Mm -hmm. The context was rushed. The need was to rush. We had, you know, uh, First Order troops coming, all that kind of stuff. That was all fine. I even like the exchange as they're running. We need a pilot. We right. got one. All right. this kind of stuff. The scene, though, after their first little victory... And the Millennium Falcon, and she comes out of the cockpit, he comes out of the gunner hole, and like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, eh, th that didn't work for me. Mm. But after that, it got right back on track. Okay. It could have gone, it could have spiraled out of control at that point, right, right. but it didn't. It got right back on track. As soon as she said, I'm Finn, I'm Ray, then it was right back to normal. And the relationship between Grey Throat, you legitimately felt, because this is probably the first woman he's really having a conversation right. with in his life that isn't Phasma right. uh, or other stormtroopers, right? <laughs> right? So, I mean, he's he doesn't even know how to act. He doesn't even want to tell it. He doesn't know how to tell the truth. He's trying to get BB-8's help and all that kind of stuff. Tell the truth. <laughs> tell the truth. <laughs> and then the whole relationship from there on just was consistent that way and grew and developed. And I just, this one of the main reasons this movie works yeah. is because of the chemistry between the two of them. All right, now that brings us to another email from you guys. This is email uh, number two. This one comes in from Bruce Watson. Bruce writes, hey guys, love the shows. I found the show during the wait for The Force Awakens and have watched every week since. Thank you for that. Do you think that Ray and Finn will have a love story going forward in the series? And if not, where do you see a love interest brewing? Thanks, and may the force be with you. Ken, you're shaking your head. No, absolutely not. I okay. think they teased it, and sure, hey, Finn, I agree with John. He's like, cute girl. Friend uh, zone? Fr uh, yeah, yep. I can tell you. <laughs> kiss, on, kiss on the forehead, <laughs> friend yeah, zone. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, as Sir Jorah Mormont of real life, I can tell you that happens. <laughs> um, but I think Finn is going to get uh, a love interest, and I think it's going to be someone else. We don't need them t together. Right. I think Finn, you're right. Finn and Poe are going to go this way. They've got a war to fight. They've got the resistance to save. There's no government in this galaxy right now. It got taken out uh, by the Starkiller base. They're gonna go that way, and right. it, just some of the casting stuff we've heard. I think, I think, give give Finn a girl. I think he needs one. He deserves one, right? Right. right. But it doesn't need to be Ray. She's and gonna go on her Jedi. Ray's on Dagobah. <laughs> you know, like, for yeah. the not real Dagobah. I'm Finn just saying her and, version. Finn and Ray are almost like a Luke and Han, where it's like once again yeah. Star Wars Episode Four echoing. They're on Jakku. They're running away from the stormtroopers. Yeah. They yeah. get in the Millennium Falcon. What do they ha end up having to do? They have to fight t Tie Fighters. Great kid, don't get cocky. That echoes that scene where they're like, you did a good job. No, I did it. So there's there's those. Once again, you look at the original script, you flip it, you add it, you change it. But it's yeah. still traveling through that same storyline, but in a brand new way. So I think, once again, I think the way that they um, basically echoed the film but did a brand new film was really great. And I, th and I love the way they introduced those characters. That's why I don't think I, I saw the chemistry with them and it could go either way. I, I wouldn't be mad if they ended up becoming a couple or if they just became better Ooh, friends because right. that's where it's at right now. John, what do you think? Oh, yeah, friend zone. Friend, friend zone. zone for life. Yeah. And we, we heard long before the movie even came out that there was some casting going on in episode eight, and one of the roles they were looking at was, was a romantic love interest for Finn. 
Oh, so, right, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, a long yeah. time ago we heard yep. that. So it's like, oh, so I guess these two don't end up together. Right, really? because people think maybe Daisy really died. Yeah, they're like, yeah, oh, yeah right, Daisy right. Really died. Right, but right. no, as it turns out, it ends with a kiss on the forehead. That right. is the right. ultimate mark of the friend, friend zone. zone. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I yeah. Got the so scars so right Finn, here. I think Star Finn's going to get a love interest. the friend zone. What's that? I think Finn's going to get a love interest. I just don't think it's going to be Dobbs Story and it ain't going to be Ray. Okay. One of the things I wanted to talk about is kind of that someone brought up a really good point. Especially on this show, look. Every week we talk about the the new books and the comics, and we, we what we've we've told we've been able to find in Lost Stars, and we found in Aftermath and Shattered Empire was that what happened after Return of the Jedi in regards to the Republic and how they rebuilt themselves, and the Empire was kind of scattered and went off on their own. Um, I knew that going into the movie, so as I was watching The Force Awakens when they were talking about the Resistance and the First Order, I never once said, "Oh, I wonder how they formed," because I knew. But that's only because I've been reading everything. Someone else who hadn't, like, well, wait a minute. I thought the Empire was gone. So this is, I didn't think they did a great job of explaining to non-canon readers exactly what the landscape was 30 years later. I think that they, it could be a little confusing as far as like what the resistance is, what the First Order is, where did the First Order come from, what happened to the Empire. Mm. All that stuff I think could have been explained a little bit more. Does anybody else disagree? You know what, I, I, or, I, I, I agree. agree with you, but in the same breath, I'm glad they didn't do a bunch of galactic Senate meetings in a semicircle sure, sure. to <laughs> explain trade federations and just some of the things that they did in those prequels. Which, but the history, I mean, just to learn what happened. I'm with you, but yeah. by showing instead of talking is one of the key things of mm -hmm. cinema, and they, I think they couldn't, they needed to move forward in the story and I think with the Empire the Empire Strikes Back will probably help explain a few more things that they didn't get through the in Empire, this one. Is gonna be like, yeah, yeah whatever the next uh, one is. You're absolutely right. Uh, I, I read not as much as you. I read more of the comics I think than you do but I, I, you have to dig. But I think uh, Aftermath there's some clues in there and I think Chuck Wendig deserves some uh, kudos for a book that's maligned that, that actually has a lot of stuff in it. Mon Mothma says in there you know we're not going to do an army. We're not going to get involved in this. We want to rule by people choosing to work with us mm -hmm. not having an army I mean, threatening and the them. resistance is like and, and the resistance is a private military force started by General Leia, who begged Akbar to come out of retirement. And the Republic doesn't condone it, but they're there with them. And the it's a symbolic scene when Starkiller Base takes out five planets. It's a Hosnian system. Hosnian Prime is the new seat of the New Republic, and all those people who uh, kind of. All right, Leia, you're kind of crazy. You think the First Order guys are up to some good, and that's kind of where it is. So where are you? Is this from a book? What, what is this from? It's from putting it all together. Okay, and, from And I've, all... I've had to research it and do my okay. homework, okay. but because I the first time, I was a little confused. Yeah. General Hux's speech actually contains a lot of it. Okay. If you go to that little the Third Reich speech, he's right. saying it all there. The new Repu We're going to take them and their fleet out because the Resistance won't have them to kind of help anymore. Got it. Uh, it's all, uh, there's something called but the Galactic think, Concordance, which was this peace thing between right. the Empire and the New Republic. That, that did, they that, did talk about that in the novel. That's yeah. all going to come out. Yeah. But as far but as me not reading these books and I'm just seeing the films. You don't know any of that. I, I felt know. a little bit lost. Like, right. look, I know the Empire got taken down. The Emperor got killed. But there's the whole rest of the all the Empire. So... There's going to be You're these right. battles. I figured that's going to take a long time. I was a little confused with the New Republic and the Resistance and the Empire and the First Order. But right. it is confusing, and I think that's a good point you bring up. Yeah. Do, to the uninitiated, it well, was. Do you think that you know they maybe could have explained it a little bit more, especially after hearing that? Because all that stuff makes sense, and all that history, I remember as you put, piece it all together, but nobody knows that except for people who are reading the stuff. Yeah. No, it, it, they, they could have. Look, there's two trains of thought here. There's one train of thought that goes right back to how did Max von Sydow get the map? We don't need to know. For the story to keep going, we right. don't need to know. Right. All we need to know is he's got it. How did this all work out? What we learned is we didn't need to know. For the movie to work, we didn't need to know. Right. But I agree with you that it probably it wouldn't have hurt things too much to put in one more half paragraph, that opening crawl, mm. following the fall of the second yeah. Death Star, the remnants of the Empire retreated, whatever, and the newly formed uh, New Republic created a treaty, blah, blah, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you know, you probably could have summed up everything in about six lines. And give it to us and all it, on the crawl. Yeah, yeah and it yeah. might not, that might not have been a bad idea. It only t would have taken about 10 seconds, right. six lines, and you would have put everybody in that theater, because we all knew what it was, but a lot of people didn't. And I think everybody got over the fact that they didn't know, and they just, okay, okay, there's a first order, and there's the resistance, that's all I need to know go and that's fine but it probably would have helped clear it up for a bunch of people yeah. they just did that at the beginning especially if you're watching uh, em uh episode six and they're like ah, i guess the emperor's dead look all the statues are falling <laughs> right. and then yeah. you're watching this you're like 
Who are these first order yeah, dudes? Right. That's yeah. what, that, you know? that was kind of my point of it. And I, so to be explained a little bit more. But they're, you, they're also, and you've, you're listening to the novel. I'm listening to the audiobook, audiobook. of Force Awakens right now about. Because uh, you love chapter. those audiobooks. I question your literacy sometimes. No, I, I, don't, uh, I but, actually uh, only read, only the only audiobook I've ever d- done is Look, New Dawn. Son, I listen Everything to books. Else. That's what I do no, now. No. I listen to books. That's that. that, that no, I'm going to defend that one because every other book I've read, the only one that I've listened to audiobook was New Dawn in this one. He's a listener, not a reader. But I believe there's something in. It's probably in the novel, but there's a character called Corsella who appears in the movie for about two seconds. And apparently there might be deleted scene. Leia sends her to the New Republic Senate mm. to plead their case, and they turn her away. Oh, wow. Wow. And it's and there's a character. She's a female resistance officer. So, what, but I think it I goes, to, about that. It yeah. goes to what John's saying. I, we don't need that. Right. We just don't need it. What's the? What would have been our complaint if they did that? My, More political yeah. talking. Well, Let I me bring that. up one thing. Emperor Snoke, or whatever his name is, Grand Leader Snoke. So, uh, Supreme, Supreme Leader. Leader. Supreme Leader Snoke. The Wise. The Wise. Darth Plagueis. Or whatever. Um, what's up with that? I mean, for myself, it's like, right. if I was just going rocking along, I, I was expect like, Jason Sudeikis to come running in here in a red windbreaker yeah. breaker suit any second now. Yeah. What chucking, up with uh, that? Uh, chuck, uh, chucking, uh, the, <laughs> chucking the Emperor down a pipe. He explodes. Yeah, and then now we got Who's this Snoke? dude. Yeah, yeah well, it's like, it. but it's like I'm just saying, if you jump from yeah. episode six, which is how people are going to be seeing this, like in yeah. five or ten years, when they're like, I got the whole box set of all twelve. They throw them all together. You're going to be like, all right, oh, yeah. Luke one, and the Emperor's dead, and then this other dude's like, now I am the ruler. It's like, what's well, that episode, dude? episode eight could fill in a lot of these blanks for sure. sure. Um, but you know, it's one of the things we talk about all the new characters. Then we got started to get introduced to the old, and the first old character we were introduced to was the Falcon. And that the right. way oh, yeah. they introduce the, Whip I over. love that. Oh, Not that God. that's garbage. Yeah. And then she's run through it like, let's go with the garbage. And it turns to the sign. We all cheered. Oh, I fell man. for oh, it. Did God. you guys fall for it? I didn't no, see because it Time no, magazine either. That Time magazine ruined it for me. Really? Uh, I didn't yeah. see it. What are you talking? When she said that one's garbage? The, I know. I knew the, the the Falcon. Like the Falcon. Oh, as soon as I saw her, I didn't know it was oh. revealed there. Yeah. But as soon as she, he said that ship, and then she said that one's garbage, and they didn't show it. I'm like, oh, that's gotta be the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. It's gotta yeah. be the Millennium Falcon. I, 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 I fell for it. I was so into the, oh, they're gonna get killed, and I fell yeah. for it, which was a great moment. No, for it was me. a great reveal. I cheered. Yeah. It was yeah. like, oh, that's the it, Falcon. It, yeah. was, it was a great reveal, and then the fact that they get in and the fly. I mean, everything they do, and great. that's where we. That's another reason why I start to really buy into Ray being Luke, the Luke's kid, the granddaughter of Anakin Skywalker, because of the way she flies, man, the way she fixes stuff, and the way she flies. Right. And she was just zipping through those cannons, and like. You don't think she could be the great granddaughter of Qui Gon and Shmi? <laughs> yeah, right. That's going around. Now. Well, is did, that going around? Going around too? Did Luke yeah. take his uh, daughter and like shoot a bunch of womp rats on Tatooine, <laughs> like give her some target practice when she was five? While I'm he's telling you, her. she ain't his daughter. Uh, I know. Okay. Gonna, Pia doesn't think so. I'm in. I'm in the, that's gonna, in the camp. That's going to be a big discussion. I'm in the camp, but I want to hear John's theory. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be in the big discussion at yeah. the All end right. here too. Um, and then you know they get on. They get on the. Uh, they finally they're in Falcon. They're in space, and this is where. We get to see Han again, man. And when Han when Han came back and just, you know, we knew that line was coming of the chewer home. I mean, even though we had seen it already and, and the cheers came back when he when he said it again, you know, the, we, we knew it was coming, but we wanted to hear it again. And it does. Yeah. And Chewie, who's getting younger by the, by the minute, <laughs> um, I loved all that stuff between Han and and Ray and Finn and just the new with the old. And he was going to be like the kind of liaison into into this world. But I love the introduction of Han back into the Star Wars universe. John, how did you feel about it? Yeah, no, I, yeah. I thought it was great. I really do. I mean, I could have done without a lot of that scene, like the whole sequence of scenes that takes place on his new freighter. I could have right. done without a lot of that. The to death be gang and stuff. The death look. gang and the the horrendously CG monsters. Yeah, that was one of my biggest issues. It just Black. But I love Mark Ellis. Mark Ellis is great. Right. Right. He did a really good job. Oh, solo. <laughs> um, I, I really could have done without a lot of that whole sequence. I yeah. think they like, Chewie were home yeah. and let's go. Okay, you convinced me to help you with this droid. All right, let's go. Well, I did like it the stuff, have... though. But the stuff on when he's talking about Luke, like when he's, he has a, a map to But that's Luke. all on the Millennium Falcon. Right, right. Yeah, You're saying all, yeah, yeah, freighter, yeah, yeah. Just all the stuff, stuff back out on the freighter. Yeah, yeah. I could have done without all that. Yeah, I agree. You know, you know what that scene does, though? Because even listening to the book about it, you know, more, it sets up that Han is now 
back to the Han. Because last, like you said, in Jedi, last he was general. Mm -hmm. It was General Solo. Right. So when we see him again, now he's back to that smuggler ways. And you're like, well, and and he owes people money, just like that, he owed Jabba money. It's like once again a, a feeling to yeah. get people back. It, it's a it's a redo. It's a retelling of the of Episode Four, but in a brand new way where right. people some people don't learn from their mistakes. And he screwed up. Well, he and went his back. Kid, and he says it. He yeah, says, his kid went to the dark side. His marriage fell apart. He went back to what he knew. That's the key. Right. He later says it to, to Leo. I just went back to what I knew. He didn't have to show us with eight minutes of screen time with bad CGI Maybe not eight monsters. minutes, but, I, but you know, because the first time, I would think I was the biggest, uh, I was the biggest advocate of saying we didn't need that scene. Because I, I, I was really taken out the first time I saw it with the Men in Black uh, scene, like you were saying, though, too. The second time, for some reason, didn't bother me at all. Uh, maybe because I had already accepted I knew it was coming, but didn't bother me as much as I thought it did. But I also started to like the stuff with Han maybe could have cut, been cut down a fair amount um, but it did show me again he's back to doing what he you needs best you guys are tough man I like that scene I didn't hate the Raptors <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why you guys are so down on the Raptors they're just trying to escape <laughs> They're yeah. roly-poly monsters that eat people. Just what I'm trying saying, to you know what they're for, though? And that's what I like also. They're, they're, and he mentions it briefly. Is the king that he's bringing it to this yep. king for the, for, right. for the zoo. For like a zoo on this world, which is amazing. Um, I want to know more, more about that. J.K. Rowling's working on that. Yeah. yeah. I want to know more about that king. I'm just saying I, I like that scene. It reminded me of other scenes, maybe not in Star Wars, but in scenes of Empire, where you had a little moment that isn't related to any of the rest right. of the storyline or the script, where you just have a little action-adventure you have Ray and Finn trying to escape. You introduce the Ray dudes, and they didn't do really anything but get eaten by Raptors. That was my disappointment. Right. But whatever. I thought it was a fun scene. It didn't bother me. I thought it was like it showed you this is what Han and Chewie have been dealing with. The, it's it's over for them. They might as well come back and help these guys get back. You know what I mean? It's like, right. all right, we owe them. There's Let's some good get comedy in there, too, even when he's like, are you the Han Solo? And Chewie's like, yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. There's, there's that some great. great stuff. There's some great Han moments. I think from the the critic side, I agree with John. Like it was a little long, and I don't like the Rathars at all. But as setting up story wise, and Han again, themes of acceptance, and Han not wanting to accept his part in his son's journey, his ex wife or the separated wife's journey, and the resistance journey, he doesn't want to accept that. Maz says to it too. He goes, "It looks like he's like you are. You've been trying to run for this thing run forever, for and yeah. that's okay, man." And and someone said to me the other day, you know, uh, Poe Dameron's kind of the Han Solo. Of Force Awakens, and when no Han Solo is the Han Solo right. Force Awakens, right. 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 and right. and that that did set get set up, and there's some great moments. The two uh, two times I let you down, right? Uh, but I do agree. I, the Wrath Tars, I I've seen it four times. Uh, it bothers, every, every every, it bothers me every okay. time. What a waste of the raid guys, though. We, yeah. Really, you get now, the now I was raid watching, guys in the movie yes. and you use them for that. I agree, but I was watching it. I was watching. It, did do they all die? Because. I think they do. I, I don't think Tasu Leach dies. I think Tasu yeah. Leach survives. Yeah, I think he survives. Yeah, because I'm sorry, who's Tasu Leach? Tasu Leach um, is the dude with who yeah, the one okay, is talking one of the to. Him. Yeah, 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 I have yeah. the Lego figure. I can bring it in. We'll <laughs> right, play. Well, show yeah. me later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go to our our next uh, email, and this is from Hugo Ariolo, who writes, "With all the speculation and supposed leaked photo that was rolling that was floating around, I would like to know what your first initial reactions were when seeing Snoke in the film." Also, now knowing what Snoke looks like and him not looking like immune, not sure if Plagueis being immune is canon anymore, are you certain that ever, excuse, are you more certain than ever that Snoke is actually Darth Plagueis? If he is, what episode do you think that will be revealed in? A lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, okay, now as far as the picture goes, now we, we've had a lot of conversation about this on the picture. John's addressed the, the picture on Movie Talk. Um, we thought at one point he was going to look like Darth Plagueis. Uh, it turned out he wasn't. However, this dude, Snoke, is a mess. His face is all jacked up. His head is all scarred up. Um, he has gone through some shit. Yep. Um, there has been a lot that has happened with him. So when I first saw he's and I and John I, and I, I understand your issue with it. I know he does look a little uh, really CGI. I was okay with that with because it turned out to be a hologram anyway. Because when I first saw him was twenty five feet, I, I was oh. I was bummed. <laughs> no, right? yeah. I was really I was bummed. bummed. I said I said oh come on man, Luke or whoever's gonna be fighting a twenty five foot guy. And then they reveal that hologram, and I went all right that they got me like where it's oh, they about got me falcon too. thing didn't yeah, they got me too um and i didn't so i didn't mind i didn't mind the cgi of of how he looked and i'm wondering what they're going to fix that up so um we'll get into the plague thing in a second but the overall look what do you feel about the look i thought it was 
and not in a bad way, generic bad guy. He's got a cloak on. It's it's Andy Circus doing Andy Circus, and that's a great thing. Yeah. But and I think later on it will pay off. Uh, you're not going to have Circus sitting in a chair for three movies right. doing that stuff. But uh, you know, I was like, okay, I can live with it. I'm glad he's not 25 feet tall. He's probably three feet tall, but. You, you didn't like the yeah. Say like, what if he's Yoda size? What you didn't like mean? the CGI at all, right? Well, no, no. Here's here's the thing. I actually I like the look oh, of the you character. Did? Okay. I like the look of the character. However, with all the hoopla and all the headlines about how we're getting back to practical effects with the Force Awakens, when I look at what your design of Snoke was, you didn't need to make that CGI. You could have done that. And what you ended up with as a prosthetic, you could have done that guy up in a costume. I mean, if you can do the elephant man in that share yeah. movie, uh, you can do this guy. <laughs> and I thought you didn't need to make it CGI. Now, that being said, I still like the um, there. There he is. Yeah. I still like the design of the character because you're right. This guy has been. Through a car wreck, yeah, it's several car I mean, wrecks. Look, his, 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 from his, from the look of it, his head's all. Yeah. He looks more like the, the one on the on the uh, on our left. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now here's the funny thing about this though. I walked into the Force Awakens feeling not hundred percent, but fairly good that Snoke is going to end up being Darth Plagueis. I walked out with that being much lower. The funny thing is that even though I was less convinced than ever that he was Darth Plagueis. A lot of people I had talked to after the screening who never thought he was Darth Plagueis, all of a sudden they were completely convinced he was. And they brought me back around. You're right. The The fact that Plagueis is immune in the books is no longer canon. Right. right. All, all that is canon now is the name Darth Plagueis the Wise. That's the only thing that we know about Plagueis at this point. And so... I have come back around to actually, no, I, I, I'm back to feeling pretty damn confident this is Darth Plagueis. I'm starting to think more and more. I mean, I, I, I was always on board. Obviously, I've been saying he's Darth Plagueis the last two and a half years. But I, I think that there, there was one reason, actually, actually from this book, that I went, I don't know, because they said that, well, they actually thought Snow could be a woman at one point. I'm like, well, yeah. they're not going to. But then, then they never said, was, yeah, they never said Darth Plagueis was, was a man or a woman. But then, obviously, he is, he is a man. But the other thing, the two things that people have been pointing out here, when you listen to Darth, Darth Plagueis's theme, when or or Sidious, when he's talking about Darth Palpatine's Plagueis, teachings, it's probably it's teachings in Episode Three. If you haven't listened to this, go listen to the Episode Three track in the Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine's teachings. When he's talking about Darth Plagueis the Wise, and then listen to Snoke's theme. They're basically the same They're identical. tune. And if you put a Pink Floyd in the middle of that, <laughs> <laughs> play it backwards. Yeah. And, 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 Watch I mean, Wizard of Oz. This is a little Oz. thing. This is a little bit of a stretch. But I remember watching the movie, uh, Episode Seven, and thinking it felt like a forced line. The way Ben says, "He's wise." Uh, Leader Snoke is wise. It's like that felt like an out of place line. And then somebody reminded me of Darth Plagueis the Wise. I thought, yeah. oh, maybe that was a the wise. That was yeah. a tip. Right there. So yeah. I got to say for myself personally, like, you know, I know you guys showed me pictures of the moon and all that yeah. other stuff. And I was like, ah, you know, even that that didn't look that cool to me. Yeah. I, I just thought he looked totally CG and just like a weird engineer from Prometheus. <laughs> he did look like Prometheus. Like like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, really? That's Snoke? Yeah. Well, I hope that's a mask. And he takes it off. He's like, look at me. I'm Darth Plagueis. Ah, you know, something. Yeah. Just something a little more evil and less generic. Like a battle-scarred uh, dude who doesn't get out in the sun a lot. He's like, look, I don't like the sun. And then somebody sabered my face. That's what it just, it just doesn't... I'm sure... I mean, it, it's all through the acting. So yeah. it's like this guy's yeah. sitting... He's, you know, a giant hologram. hologram. Yeah. I'm sure once they actually get into a scenario in episode eight where he's resuming uh, Kylo Ren's training to make him a Darth Ren or whatever they're going to have, Darth Kylo, whatever his new name's going to be. Um, when, once he actually becomes a true Sith and he's revealed to be Darth Plagueis, right. I'm sure within the acting and stuff, that'll all come through and less so of just like where you're kind of in this, you're really focusing on a close up shot of not that great. Uh, CG and unfortunately for me, like if if they just did a guy in a mask, if they just ca if they just had circus in a in a seat in a a latex right. you know makeup, it would have been a thousand times better. Well, at maybe least they for will. Me. Maybe they will in episode eight. I mean, probably yeah. not. Probably going to stick to to performance. I guy. hope we see something in episode eight that makes us go. 
Yeah, this character had to be CG. Yeah, because right. from this, he didn't well, need to be say, CG. They say the rumors are that he's seven feet tall, but still, like, it'll put stilts on him if, if anything. But, uh, right. but I mean, what, what, yeah. Go ahead. No, to what you guys are saying too about the CG, just in a world where I'm convinced that apes are running around fighting and talking, and I and I totally lose myself. I right. never lost myself with snow. Because again, I could g overcome that and enjoy the movie. But there was for me just a little bit. Yeah, of, and well, to, to, you to, know. the argument against that, I think though too, is that like you guys are saying, it's it, it's a hologram. We haven't seen him yet. Sure. In action, we don't know because that—that's the true test. Sure. Is once mm -hmm. he's jumping around with a lightsaber or whatever he's doing, or if he's shooting light, if he's in a scene with somebody, that's when our eyes are really going to be fooled. A hologram, you can, you, we can be forgiving on. Right. We can sure. be forgiving on the fact. Okay, look, he doesn't look the best, but it, yeah, it looks okay. It's, it's hologram. Who knows? But once he, you you start, if it starts to look again like the Men in Black or whatever yeah. it is, and it doesn't fit, and if Snoke is a guy that doesn't fit. That is going to be a problem. Well, I'm sure they'll fix. Remember the first time they revealed the Emperor, it had like monkey eyes right. and an old woman's face right. and whatever. They were like, we don't even know what this character is going to be yet. And they retrofitted yeah. it later and replaced the footage. At this point, they don't have to do that. They just have to deliver a better snow. Put him in makeup, man. Yeah. Put him in makeup. Yeah. Um, you know, now we go back to the Millennium Falcon, and uh, and after the Death Gang and the and the, the silly aliens uh, eat them all up, uh, then they get on, they get on the Falcon. They hit, hit light speed, and this is where we learn more about Luke and the fact that he's got the map to Luke and that conversation of it's all you know it's all real. The Jedi, all of it. That moment was amazing. That look, and I, and even in the book, the way that they they explain it was that the hardened, you know, grizzled solo drops when he thinks of Luke and the relationship he always had with Luke, and he talks about it. You could see it. You saw that acting with with Harrison Ford. Yeah, I knew him. Like all that. You're like, okay, th this is why he's going to go on an adventure with them, and he does. Um, I loved that reveal. Did anybody not? In, like love that I, I loved it I guess it's tinged with a little bit of bittersweet flavor because you didn't get to ever see Han and Luke yeah. in the same yeah. scene together tragic yeah yeah that's if anything would be my only like only complaint yeah and that's that's it but I, they'll fix it because Han is still alive. <laughs> right? Who knows? Right, Schnepp? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've come around. I've now come you around. don't think so. Once I, they were like, dude, the planet exploded. I was like, all right. <laughs> F it. I, F it. He's I dead. I think that was Harrison going, kill me, and then kill me again, and the planet right. I'm on, blow it up again, so yes. I'm dead, and I don't questions. have to do this. Yeah, it's right. not just a rumble, son. It's exploding. Right. All right. Right. Um, all right, so now this is our next email coming in. Uh, but, but can, yeah, can I say, can, one of the things I loved about that scene is the beautiful, beautiful symmetry uh, and, the, and the stanza rhyming with the stanza. Han standing in basically the same place that he once said, hokey religions. Da, da, da. Yeah, he's yeah. come in the same place. Now he's going, it's true. It's all of it. I thought that was a great little, little With the chessboard coming up. Yeah, yeah. And, and the <laughs> orb. And the orb. The orb. And, he's, and then when, when yeah. Uh, yeah, after Chewie gets shot and, and Finn and finding Finn's the orb, Finn throwing it to the oh, side. Oh, it's split second. If there, there's, like, I couldn't believe how many people didn't notice. Yeah. I didn't notice it the first it, but time. But then when I watched I it the it. second time, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was really fast. So yeah. I can see why some people didn't I, see I it. missed it the first time. Same here. It was after the second time. The training probe, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was amazing. When it, I didn't know what he was doing. And then yeah. when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Uh, okay, our next email comes in here. Ulf himself writes, I love the show and I watch it every week. In The Force Awakens, Han mentions that Luke went looking for the first Jedi temple. Do you guys think that the place Rey finds Luke at could be Tython? Would Disney incorporate an already established first Jedi temple into the new canon or change it simply for the sake of changing it? Now, Ken, what, can you explain this a little bit more well, here? Well, uh, gonna, they're going to go there, and Jackson, the r a rabbit X-Wing pilot, is going to be there <laughs> yeah. waiting for The it. green rabbit yes. that you uh, know I love, um, ladies and now, gentlemen. I, I'm not familiar with the, the extended, extended, extended. That's Legends, right? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not yeah. as much, man. I read Zahn's books. I read Jedi Academy, and I kind of checked out because things got – there's some great stuff, but there's some things. I'm not. I'm one of the people that's okay with them yeah. ejecting canon. And let's rebuild some stuff in, in, in the maker's image, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tython, I guess, is the the I've heard that before. It's it's the place of the first temple. So Tython was the place of the first temple in in legends. Yeah, legend, not, I, but I, not in a new canon. No, I no, don't know. No, I think there's been no mention of it. Okay. In the new yeah, canon. yeah. Because I know yeah. that Luke was on the search for uh, a temple. I mean, he even went in, in Weapon of a Jedi. He was on a planet that was looking for. It wasn't necessarily the first temple, but he's been he's been on the search for temples throughout. I mean, even in the Star Wars comic, he, Shattered he, Empire. Yeah. He, well, not not even well, Shattered Empire gets the the, the the trees. Yes, though. but in Star Wars, he's he's oh he, yeah he's yeah. looking for that because that that's why in Vader that. down right now Vader's uh, searching for him on this planet because Luke is looking for for this temple. So Luke been looking for a bunch of different temples. We're talking about all this uh, canon stuff. 
tell me this. Kyber crystals. Yeah. Obviously. Canon. That's canon. canon. And yeah. wh- where did they introduce that? Because in one of these books, they mentioned the unstable lightsaber. And that you know was why aftermath. it's extra rickety. It's because it's like this certain oh, no, kyber that, crystal. That actually wasn't aftermath. That was, um, that was that's the, the bad one. The... Uh, New Dawn, uh, not New Dawn. Uh, Heir to the Jedi. Heir to the Jedi. That was that was mentioned in that one. But Kyra crystals have been in through a bunch of different canon. And it was also in Clone Wars, and, and they, even they are like you could get those on Korriban, which is now called Moraban. Uh, a something. bunch, you know, the planet. I forget the name of the planet, but they actually had a big arc in the Clone Wars series to where one a super huge Kyra crystal is actually what powered up the Death Star. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So they 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 have they have introduced that um, quite often. So. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that could be interesting that if if they maybe reintroduce things, they, we know that they've cherry picked. Because look, if you look at Ben Solo and what whoever Ray turns out to be, let's say it looks in a certain way they've cherry picked from Timothy Zahn in a certain way. Because, sure, they have. Yeah. Because if you look in the old legends, Le- uh, Leia and Han had a son, Jason Solo, who turned to the dark side, and Luke had a kid that they named. Ben. ben. So they, they absolutely have been, like oh, you and I talked about this two years ago. Yeah. They're going to cherry pick from Legends. Why wouldn't you? You have all these great ideas out there. There will be much more. So it's very possible that this I, I think there's also nods and winks and nudges. I think Starkiller Base to me is kind of a reverse nod to the Sun Crusher ship that was in, in yeah, the right, old canon. Right, yeah. right. And they're playing along with it. That's why, going back to the Plagueis thing, I, I think it might not be Plagueis now, but it might be a nod or a similar character. Same with some, maybe some of the it's as though the Plagueis himself is is canon. Uh, yeah, but even then, if they're gonna they're playing around with some stuff, it just yeah. seems like they're. Well, you might notice in the book. There's you. I mean, when you came across in the book, you were so excited. You texted it to me. That one passage about Snoke talking about Vader, like I said, I saw it all. Oh, right, you right. remember he was like so. There's this part in the novel of Star Wars: The Force Awakens that I have not read yet. This is coming from yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, but well, when you explain what with well, said. basically there's a, there's a snippet from from Snoke to where he's he's talking to Ben Solo about he was there. He saw he's been around for a very long time. He saw it all go down, and then right when it was about to change, when Luke could have taken out his dad, he didn't. And that was the downfall. It's like, had that had happened. When, when Vader could have taken out his son, and Correct. he couldn't. Or, or vice versa, though, right. too. Luke could that's have... what he's talking about. He goes, the Empire still would have endured had Vader made the right choice right. and killed his son. Right, right. Instead, right. he didn't, and everything fell apart. And everything fell apart. So he's been around looking, watching. Personally, I think more and more it is Plagueis, because if it's, if it's Plagueis, he's off to the side saying... Because he never made me. Watching I, Palpatine. Watching Palpatine, knowing and said, "Okay, you thought you got me, you didn't, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna manipulate this, watch it, make it work." And then he's off in the shadows. He was the wise. He was the smart. He's not just gonna. F- and I'm also wondering. You talk about aftermath. Chuck Wending at the very end of aftermath introduces some character. Is that Snoke? You talking about the Vader lightsaber? No, not scene? the Vader lightsaber. The that's very, an intriguing scene as well. It is, but the very end when the the woman uh, approaches the, the there was there's, there's like an admiral in the back and someone yeah. who is who they don't me- ever mention the character by name. Like some people were hinting maybe it was a Thrawn, Thrawn. type character. Yeah. Um, oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. was so, that with Ray Sloan goes up? And, yes, yep, yes, yep. yes, yes, yes. And yeah. so the question is that, or was that the beginning of Snoke? I, who knows? That's a good, see, I wouldn't know because I, I couldn't you get couldn't to the end it. of the, the yeah. aftermath. I I ditched. Um, now let's get to the. Now this is this is a scene that, that's coming up that. that I didn't, until today, didn't know that you didn't enjoy the scene as much as I did, and that's the Maz Kanata castle scene. Yeah. Um, everything about it, or just parts of it that Just parts, just okay. elements. There are elements of the scene that I think could have been, like the fact that the, Maz uh, Kanata, great character. Yep. You can do great things with her. A uh, little bit of mystery. We don't need to know why she knows all this stuff, and we don't need to know why we haven't heard of her before, and we don't need to know any of that stuff. Just that she's there, she's been around a long time, she's smart, and right. she's good. Right. That's all we need to know. Um, they seek her out. They find her place. You didn't need to make her palace a new cantina. That, that's all. That's all. Like everything else that happens there and transpires, her conversations both with Finn and with Han, um, you know, Ray going down, discovering the lightsaber in the basement, all that stuff I was great with. I, I have to admit, though, that seeing that they were recreating, once again, I understand homage, but sometimes homage goes a little too far. And it, it jarred me. It jarred me out of the movie for a minute, to be honest really? with you. Seeing it this, just the cantina all over again in somebody's home, 
Um, it jarred me out of the movie, and I could have done without it. It didn't sour the whole scene for me, though, and okay. everyth- all the important story po- points that happened there, I just wish they handled it a little differently. That's what, all. What do you think, hey? I don't fully disagree with John there. It just, when the doors opened uh, and the music, and I do like the song. The we, we were great. humming it to yeah. ourselves. When the doors opened, I went, ah, they're doing, a, they're doing another cantina scene. And so I did have that moment. I love all the stuff with Maz. I, I, I agree with John, too. I love even Maz as himself. How did you get the lightsaber? It's a story for another time. Don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm fine with all that. But, yeah, there's a little bit of that. And it, it's a place to put a bunch of cameos. Judah Friedlander and, and Warwick Davis are all in there. And I, I, I don't disagree fully. I didn't, it didn't take me out as much. But, again, I kind of, oh, okay, they're, they're doing a creature place. I loved it, you two sourpusses. I thought it was, uh, I, I had I had such enjoyment going in there, and I was okay with it being another cantina scene. I loved the new music, especially when I think of Return of the Jedi, special edition. He's <laughs> here, so yeah, he he So it was better than that. Never, than that. never, <laughs> never <laughs> mention that scene in my presence hey, it's, again. It's your favorite movie. What um, was her not, name? The original. The original, not the special yeah, what edition. What was her name? Slice Noodle. Uh, Slice Noodle. Slice Noodle. Slice Noodle. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so bad. So when you have this, this but we song, know the song oh as much God, as we hate it. It was subtle. This song and it had like a reggae feel to it. But I liked yeah. when he walked in. I love that Han Solo I, like screams at him at the bar. I loved Maz Kanata. I know that. I, and because remember I you like and Maz, you and Dennis came back and you guys were, uh, thought she was like a tangerine. Yeah, it's a tangerine head. Yeah, and I, Yoda, orange Yoda. <laughs> that's racist. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's racist. Orange Yoda. I, I I really liked her and I liked that you know Han said she's a thousand years old. She's an old load. Um, and to even when they, they misdirect of the I have seen your eyes. She's talking to Finn. I love that. Mm-hmm. But she's talking, and then the way it turns. Now there's something kind of crucial that happens in that moment there. That's interesting. Is that Maz turns to Han and goes, "Who is the girl?" And then it cuts. This is why I think there's two reasons why I think Han knows Ray, because in something we jumped over when they first arrived to that planet. Go and watch that scene again, because I watched it the first time I seen it, I didn't pick up on it, and then someone pointed it out to me, and I saw it in the second time. When Ray says, um, look at all the green, I've never seen this green, or whatever she says. I didn't right. think any place in the universe was this green, yeah. There's a look on Han's face, and when I originally, when someone brought it up to me, I was like, yeah, he just feels bad for her because she's been living on this planet the whole time. But then the way that Han reacts, it looks guilty. It looks guilty, and it looks it looks like there's something there, there much more than just someone who just didn't know. I think I really do think he knows who she is, and that's also why I think it cut when Maz Kanata says, who is the girl, because I think he says something to her, because the next time you see Maz Kanata talking to Ray, she knows about her. She says, Han told me. Mm. She says that. By the way, I, I love when people, uh, uh, there's some critics of Force Awakens. Uh, that's great. It's good. And, and, and have your fun criticizing. But I love that we now have a Star Wars movie that we can criticize a look on Han Solo's face might mean to the story because this is the Game of Thrones era. Yeah. Where, well, if you go back to season one, Ned Stark, right. he won't look John in the eyes. Right. I love this. It geeks me up. Get nerd chills excited. Yeah. I love it. I'm gonna go have to rewatch it after this. You gotta go to watch. the theater. Yeah, are you gonna go see it again? Nah, maybe not. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I I like them. I like this redo of the Moss Eisley scene. Yeah. I just question, like, you know, where are all these people? Are they all just coming here? Just they come to this planet to hang out at this bar? Because it's just like a big it's a stop. green. It's a stop. But it's, it's just a, it just a felt a little weird. Wouldn't you rather me. go there than Mos Eisley? Yes. <laughs> All right, you answered my question. <laughs> yeah, there you, know. you go. Uh, I want to go to the bar in Coruscant with the sports bar. Uh, some death get some, yeah. some death sticks. Yeah, hey, you want to do some death sticks? Uh, yeah. You don't want to do those death sticks. Now you you are. What, how do you feel about all, all that? Now, it, it, well, not necessarily because I know you feel a little differently as far as the, the look goes with Han. But do you think that that cut to where you think that was deliberate, where she asks who's the girl, and then it cuts, and then later on she knows everything about her after Han told me? It felt like a natural question to ask in a cutaway because the answer would be unimportant. Uh, I mean, uh, honestly, here you people, and I'm talking to you, who are go- going on this thing about oh she's she's Luke's daughter. Here's what's happening here. You're, you're putting on these glasses. You, you're doing what we as human beings do. You come up with a theory, and now you're going to start looking at everything in light of your theory. So suddenly now, a simple look that Han gives Ray. Now it's a, no, it's a look of guilt because he knows she's Luke's daughter and was destined for greater things. No, no, it wasn't. It was a look, you fool. Well, it, watch it. Watch it. it. I did watch it. First as of all. As many times as you. 
you were at a higher. <laughs> you went from you went from going from a two percent chance to a ninety nine percent chance that she was his daughter before you saw the movie. Uh, you, remember you dropped your percentages. Your percentages dropped. You no, see, I went from I went from um, I went from ninety five percent that they were siblings to ninety five percent to two percent that they were right that, that they were cousins. Yeah. So then I dropped down that they weren't cousins. You know, they weren't, right, do, yeah. We're gonna have to do that percentage again at the end. I'm I'm telling you though I. I I was feeling the same way when I saw that. When someone told me about the look, the first time I know it was just a normal look. And then I watched it a second time, and I'm, I just, I just okay, happened here's to think it, it sets it up. It's, this this is all true. It, instead of us of dancing view. around this, let's yeah. just get to the heart of it right yeah. now because we were dancing around it through the whole show. The there, there's a couple of big key things about why I don't believe she's his daughter, um, and and one of them really hinges on something very very significant. Now, uh, I've gone through my whole argument. You can't keep going back to the well of shrinking universe. Luke is actually Vader's son. Luke is actually Leia's uh, sibling. Then you get into the new trilogy. Ben is actually Han and Leia's son. And now you're going to go back to it again. Uh, I just don't think they're going to do that. Now I I do think. But that, it's a Skywalker story. I, it is, and there's plenty of Skywalkers in the story. Yeah, but it also, but we just talked about cherry picking. We talked about cherry picking with, oh, know, with, with Jason and But I'm and just talking Jaina. about what's actually in front of right. us now. Like, there are plenty of Skywalkers there already, and we, we already know they're not brothers and sisters. But here's the thing I, I do buy into the theory, I totally buy into this, that she was one of the students of Luke Skywalker. And that he probably sent the younger ones off into hiding at some point. I do believe that. I, I'm totally on board with that. But one of the things Star Wars has never done, and what J.J. hasn't done in this movie either is, he's never kept a secret from the audience that all the characters already know. And one of my big, like for instance, the, the, there was a secret that Ben is actually Han and Leia's thing, but that's something that a lot of people knew, and so they reveal it to the audience pretty quick. Right. Because that's something that a lot of the characters knew. Mm -hmm. One of my big things about why I don't believe for a second that, that, uh, that Ray is Luke's son is that the timing doesn't line up. Daughter. If he, a daughter, thank you. If, if she was Luke's daughter, Leia would know about her, Han would know about her, uh, 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 Kylo would know about her, everybody who knows about her. But I think they all did. Well, see, that's the thing. Now, you are doing that based on, did you see the look? Not just that. Not now, just now, that. now with Ben being uh, Leia and, uh, and Han's son, there's no dancing around it. Mm -hmm. I know your family. And blah, blah. And they reveal it all because everybody knew, and so it was revealed to the audience. This, this idea that there's a commonly known fact. All these major characters know that Luke has a daughter, and it's her, and all this kind of stuff. And yet they're completely hiding it from the eyes. Don't buy it. Plus, I don't buy the fact that if Luke had a daughter, he, uh, unlike what Obi-Wan did with him, which was put him into the care of family and then stay there himself to oversee him being raised by family, the, the idea that Luke would dump her in the middle of a wasteland to die of starvation. Well, what if, she, well, what if she's like a, a Darth Revan type character? But, as, then, now, let me address that by saying this. Yeah. Here's what it, it ultimately comes down to for me when talking about uh, Ray's lineage and, and all that kind of stuff is that in Star Wars and and with uh, uh, Ray and, and the relationship with Luke, I think to draw that line of the father daughter relationship, I think it flies against too many accepted standards in Star Wars, and it flies again. It raises far more questions than it answers. To say now that she is his son, that raises a lot of continuity problems that you would have to then later address, um, then it does answer problems. You know, Ben being uh, Leia's son, that answers questions and that makes other things make sense. To come back into episode eight and say Ray is Luke's daughter, that raises a lot of questions instead of answering questions for me. So, I, I mean, well, and you and I know something that other people don't know mm. that still has us on opposite sides right, of the issue. Right. Um, but it's, I just believe that at the end of the day, calmer heads will prevail, and we're going to see that she is not his daughter. Let, see, me, say, I, let yeah. me say this. I think she's Ray. Uh, Ray is Luke's, Luke's uh, daughter, simply because if you look at the original Star Wars trilogy, everyone's related. And they continue that relation as it's a Skywalker story. They do the prequels. It's all about Luke's dad and then how he had Luke and Leia. They reveal that Luke is Darth Vader's son, in Empire Strikes Back, and then in Return of the Jedi, all of a sudden now Leia's related. And I remember getting irritated. I was like, what, are they all family in this? And that's Star Wars. So if you're just going by the previous six it's Star Wars, and Luke is it is a soap, soap opera, opera, and they spell it out for you. It's not complicated. She's his daughter. It's, I mean, that's how I feel. It's not, they're not, it's not a trick to the audience. I think it's just, this uh, orange-headed lady said it best. She was like, <laughs> you know, 
It, the Force is strong in the Skywalker family. Anakin, ha Anakin had it. Luke had it. And now this is your saber. Bam. It calls she's spelling. She, she didn't say she it. She said it's it calling you. you out. The Force calls to you. The yeah. Force, which she's got a, it's off the chart. It's 20,000 midichlorians. Whatever you want to say, <laughs> Ray has got the Force of Luke Skywalker, the Chosen One, whatever. She is his daughter. I mean, it's it's spelled out. Where you stand, Kenny? I don't condone gambling, but if I'm putting money down, I'm going to say it's her daughter. But I, I, I'm i intrigued to hear more with John has scrambled on his uh, wall in his bedroom at home about it. It's almost <laughs> just as wrong, good spirit, conspiracy no, theory it's, as well. I, I understand where he's coming but, from. Uh, sure. But one of the big thing being, it's almost too obvious, and I think we are in an age of storytelling where uh, even uh, I keep mentioning Game of Thrones because I'm a huge fan of the Song of Ice and Fire, where even I'm, I'm like, I'm not sure of Jon Snow's lineage because now it just seems... Too obvious because so much is built to that. So, I if I'm hedging bets, I'm going with John on that. I just still I kind of go with you where it's just a Skywalker fa family well, tale. I, I think so too. And let's get into the vision of what happened here. Like so, she gets there, she picks up that saber. The saber calls to her, you know. And like the, why I bring up Darth Revan, if you're not familiar with Knights of the Republic, it was this character who just seems to be like a normal person, um, and then all these. Visions and things start happening. Can you simply restate the greatest RPG it's ever the, made? What best Star Wars yeah, game of all time? And it, throughout this game, you see how powerful this person was, and it's been hidden. The Jedi did a trick to kind of mind wipe, and I think that's kind of what Luke has done to protect his daughter. And I also think in this vision, she's seeing these things that, w that this saber is is having her see. She, the, the, and throughout that, there's so many Easter eggs in that vision. We can all agree the vision was awesome. Um, the Bespin part was, was great. was really cool. And you hear, by the way, there's a little Yoda thing in there that Frank Oz actually did some dialogue for. They didn't use that dialogue, but the the, the Yoda there's a, from the old trilogy they put in there. Um, then you see she sees the Duke's, Duke. Uh, Duke. Luke. Duke was in there too. Uh, Luke's academy gets slaughtered. She sees all that, and then we cut and we see her as a little kid. Um, and He's holding her hand. Yeah, that is a quite well. Don't say anything because there's a question that's coming in. Okay. We're going to talk about that really soon. Yeah, because we, we we do know who that person was. Right. Um, but that ship that's flying away, I th I'm again convinced that it's Luke. But then we hear Ray, and that's Obi Wan Kenobi, um, and it confirmed Obi Wan Kenobi and Alec Guinness saying Ray, and then. These are our first steps, which was Ewan McGregor. These are your first steps, yeah. Now, um, Ewan McGregor, and the fact that he did the di he did the, all the dialogue. He did the Ray. This is th these are her first steps, your first steps, and then they actually were able to pull dialogue from uh, uh, Jedi, mm -hmm. I think, where he's afraid or something. Afraid, this, yeah. Ray. What does that mean as far as Obi Wan Kenobi being a part? of of this, some people are saying that Obi Wan Kenobi had a daughter. No, and, and but not not that it's Rey, but that her mother could either one, you know, either whether or not Luke was shacking up with Obi Wan's daughter or whatever. Too, I think it's that's Luke. overcomplicated. I think it's, it's a Skywalker I, I'm story. With, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, but what do you think the significance of having Obi Wan in there is? Uh, Force ghost. I, I I hashtag ghost sit JT from Schmoes. Uh, I, I don't <laughs> uh, I don't know yet. I'm just having fun taking apart that vision. There's a lot there. Yeah. Um, I you say Luke dropped her off. Uh, going back to what 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 Campia said there, would Luke do that? Or would someone who kidnapped her do that? Luke would do that because of the danger. But just to drop her off, just to drop her off on the on the on the on a planet with this junk dealer, because that's that's. If you I think she had it, an she had adequate training, as you can see when she's fighting with that staff. She's sure, already yeah, had yeah. some kind of training. She already knew how to fly ships. Took some weekend courses on Jakku's yeah. Community I mean, College. <laughs> maybe didn't blank all of it. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's like I think it's like. So there's some kind of maybe he had some deal with the junk trailer, the junk trader. You take care of her, you know. Yeah. But, but she's living on her own in the desert in a in an ad ad. It just seems unlooped. It to seems me. very unlooped to me. Un unless you know, like you say, he just had to scatter a lot of the kids. I still believe there's a connection between Luke and Ray. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I believe there was a connection. I believe there was like because one of the things that Christian said to me, and I and I totally agree with that. He said, you know, don't you get the sense from her that she's got a that that. Uh, she's had some degree of force training mm -hmm. and i totally believe that i right. think there was i think we're going to find out in episode eight that there are other children of the force right uh, that were scattered around sure. as well and that goes back to our other thing that that staff ain't just a staff oh you, you that, really? i think that you was think left more? with her i think that was left with her really? and for her okay and it's been with her her whole life 
It's with her the entire movie. She brings it along everywhere she goes. All I the way still to believe, the end, she still has yep, a staff. Yep, that is more than just a staff. Okay, um, then let's let's get to our next uh, question here. Who said This is actually from Scott A. Love Jedi Council. Watch it every week. Do you think Max von Sydow's character is the one holding Rey's arm when she's young on Jakku? Why else would she have a would he have a map and connection to Luke? May the Force be with you. No, I think so. In ca- if you have, I don't know how many times you've seen the movie, but if, you, if that's Simon Pegg's character, what's his name again? Unkar Plut. Unkar Plut. Unkar Plut. Whatever it is, uh, you hear him. He goes, "Come out, girl." It sure looks like his hand. It's yeah, his yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. I don't know for hand. sure that it's him, but it's, it's hard. Schnapp was making this argument to me, and it's hard to argue against him on this. That, especially when I saw it again, that hand sure does look like that dude's hand he says it the and voice. it sure does sound yeah. like that yeah. dude Come so here, girl. how that makes sense i have no idea but it seems like oh, that's yeah. what it is it was a very harsh trade that luke had to do under duress and he's like i gotta scatter these kids it wasn't luke <laughs> for some food parts yeah, some food. how many food parts is she yeah. worth she's worth <laughs> at least 100 <laughs> food credits portions. Portions. portions uh okay let's let's One move yeah we portion. uh like i said we could we were uh this is a conversation we could be here for five that hours vision so could be a we'll, we'll, move, show, yeah. we'll, move, we'll move oh wait before we move on yeah that vision in this book is described as the you see the sequence when luke is fighting darth vader on bespin and in that vision they actually shot footage of darth vader fighting luke but from ray's perspective and they cut it out so, uh, Interesting. There, yeah. there was a lot that there's a lot of stuff in this in that yeah. was shot that JJ decided like, well, we decided to trim that part. I would love to, uh, you know, why did they trim that? Yeah. yeah. Well, and then they had, and then there's the big, there's the attack on on the actual island there. Moscanada's place gets blown to smithereens. Finn has that fight that you were talking. You know, we we talked how he's fighting the the actual stormtrooper and could have yeah. been maybe fighting just a some pissed off stormtrooper. Storm yeah. Trailer. And then Kylo Ren finds the girl he finds ray and that scene i think that that's where we where we're really getting into whether or not they're cousins or whether or not they're former students together it's that i think it, it is a meeting that is going to be very significant once episode eight and nine plays out we're going to go back and go oh let's watch the first time that kylo ren and ray met and then she gets captured so when and again notice though that i mean we do agree though if if, if ray was luke's daughter kylo has to know her I mean, he just has to. Notice then when he runs into Supreme Leader Snoke, uh, it's still just the girl. It's like, she has force abilities. I I think I can bring... Not Supreme Leader Snoke, we have Skywalker's daughter. Because he's not sure yet. I think there's a reason he's not sure. Well, he could have been hidden. I mean, look, Vader didn't know. There's also... And the the other thing that when he is... This is the part. This is this part that everybody, and it's been a big series of debates over the internet as well too, is how she became so powerful so fast, and how she was able to read minds, like, and and be able to pick up the force and trick the stormtrooper, Daniel Craig. Yeah, and the the, <laughs> what, the thing that happened when when Kylo Ren is doing the force, uh, trying to get the mind wipe out, of, mind read out of her, and she says, "You want to be like Darth Vader, and you're, you're worried you're never yeah. gonna gonna be." Before that. He says he sees an island. Yeah, he sees. I mean, that's now. Is he re, is he seeing the future? Is he seeing a place that she was at before? Like, what what do you think that he's meant? He's talking about her dreams, and you have trouble sleeping, and you're up all night. And he's like, "Oh, I see it. You dream of an ocean with an island." Which yeah. the second, third time you watch it, you're like, "Oh." Did uh, he say an ocean with an island? She's dreaming or of did an you say ocean. Island. Yeah, okay. ocean, and then an island. But I'm paraphrasing, of course. But but uh, yeah. So I think he was in her brain. There's some new kind of force powers, which is one of the cool things about this movie. There's some new wrinkles to the force and the. Force. Yeah. powers new options on the video game yeah. so to speak. um <laughs> click a- and she's a- able to read she's and able to figure out how to do it which to him. me is the key scene in the movie uh that is when ray first defeats ren she learns her power and how she learns it you can debate and you can get in twitter arguments over how and why and when but that to me is a kind of the key scene in the movie that's where she beats ren the first time he arrogantly takes off his mask i can take what i want from you don't you know that and all of a sudden she strikes back and from the rest of the movie he's on a downward slope into mm-hmm. madness yeah and, um, and, and fearful but i think it's important to, for people like who would say how does she get so powerful so fast how does she learn all those skills the force isn't magic right you know so even i like the first time i'm watching it i just interpreted that as the force like, we have already know the Force has kind of been calling to her, much like the light has been re- tr- calling out to Ben. Mm. The Force has been calling to her for a long time. And I think it's not a matter that she learned a trick of how to get into his head. No, no, the Force revealed it to her. The mm. Force just revealed it to her. And, and let's not overemphasize how powerful she became. She did, remember, Obi-Wan said, yeah, the simple mind of the Force is very easy. So she did a mind trick on, on a stormtrooper, no big deal. And then she fought, it's important to keep this in mind too, 
she fought Kylo Ren, but let's remember that Kylo Ren was probably already dying. He had just got, remember, Chewie's bowcaster, right? Explosive. It hits yeah. something and it blows five guys back. Right. He just got shot with that and he's bleeding. Right. He's probably dying. And he just went through a little bit of a tussle with Finn <laughs> and he took care of Finn. But so he is bleeding, dying, injured, whatever. That's not an even fight. So I, I, I don't think we should overemphasize how powerful Rey got as much as she has learned to tap into the Force and that expressed itself a right. little bit. So I never thought she was too powerful. You go back to Obi-Wan and A New Hope, describing the Force to Luke, it, it, it guides you. And, and Maz Kanata says, close your eyes. And the Force will guide you. Yeah. She does that. I'm jumping to the end lightsaber fight. Again, we're all wrestling fans here. If you watch the action of stories telling, she's running. She's poking like Palpatine doing bad stage fighting. She's not kicking <laughs> Ren's ass right. it, it, until she closes her eyes and the Force guides you. The Force awakens. That, that was it. Like, yeah. How did Luke block eight shots from a probe thing? He just picked up a lightsaber. <laughs> because the Force That's guided right. him. That, yeah. that was the thing. And so that all that stuff. So let's, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, we're running towards the end of the, the show here. So let's, uh, let's just talk about some of the other moments that we want to get into here and we uh, we w unfortunately have to s skip away from the emails here we'll go to everything that happens is re the, the re reuniting of han and leia i think that even though nice moment it was a nice moment the music's great too regardless of what you want i know some people have a, maybe a criticism on carrie fisher and thinking maybe they're you know it, it's a little a little ring rust a little ring rust but i think the moment of, of them being reunited again was great c3po coming back um but i do want to talk about that fight i want to talk about that lightsaber fight too because when finn picks up the saber at the end you're like how is this guy gonna last at all he doesn't get it's basically his whole vertebrae cut in half for the most yeah, part yeah, he gets bad. wrecked and then you have kylo ren hitting himself on the side i thought that was like when he screams at him traitor that to me that brought back like anakin it brought back sith yeah. That's a yeah. direct correction, co correlation to Sith. It was yeah. a great. It was. You know, I'm saying it's a great moment. Yeah, I love that moment. It was a good moment. And then you're talking. And, uh, when you said that whole stabbing thing, Ray's fighting really sloppy. It looks. Yeah. It looks like Empire, where Luke's just kind of swinging around. And then, like you said, I remember when I first saw the movie, and Tiffany's like, "Well, how come when when." Um, when Ray has the saber back there and, and Kylo just doesn't cut her down when she's taking that pause, he can't. She's using something on him. Watch his face. It's like twitching. He's right. in like almost They're all like a, frozen. Yeah, she's using something and he's just kind of like, there's something happening to him. She, to me, well, the way I took that is that she's taking his saber skills because once she comes out of that thing, she's moving yeah. really well. Another thing, because I initially in the first couple of viewings had a critique of that moment, and this is really breaking it down, but it's like when he talks about, I can teach you in the forest, and she kind of goes, oh, yeah, the force. <laughs> it's also in slow motion, too, so the beat is drawn out a little bit yes. more. If you watch, it goes in slow motion, because I had a little problem with that part, too, but then now I get it. It, it slows down, and then, yeah. you know, again, for the audience, not everyone's read uh, books on the force like we have, right. so the general public's going, oh, that's right, the force thing. So Are I, the Stormtroopers I, clones? I know, yeah. I know, I look, I know Kylo is not a Sith proper, but right. but it is in the nature of Sith or Dark Side to do what? Find your apprentice. Yeah. And he was in that moment with her and he's like, I'll teach you. You're, yeah, yeah, your force is clearly the strong the force is very strong with you. I can teach you the force. Right. Be my apprentice. You yeah. know, that's what Sith do. That's yeah. what the dark side users do. It's true. And I think that it was also it's also should we say we didn't talk too much about Kylo Ren as far as that obsession with Vader and he wants to be Vader, but he's clearly not. He's almost like a poser mm -hmm. in a way as well. And we know we we've talked about that a lot in the spoiler reviews. Um He's but like I, a cover band he for he was, Vader. But you know, even the the, the but what he, the difference is He's for the him. Zepp again of New Canada. Yes, <laughs> yes, he was. Yeah. Great, but you know what it is? It's, it's the death of Han, though. The yes. death of Han is what really turns yeah. him. That that because he's battling with going to light the whole when time. When he says thank you, that's the most emotional moment because yeah. you're like he just killed his dad, and yeah. he's like, I, that's what I needed to fully go dark. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like the worst moment when you're like, you, I, it was. It is. I mean, we've talked about this. I don't know if we just uh, we addressed it while I was gone for a second, but. Uh, Han Solo and him meeting on that scaffolding was very emotional, but it's like, man, wouldn't it have been just that much better to have one other moment between yeah. Han and I'll Kylo? I'll go further. I, I, I think that moment represents the biggest failure of the movie. And this movie has very few, if any, failures. And I and, and even then, the, the, the scene still works to a degree, but it felt like their intention was at that moment on that skywalk 
between Kylo Ren and his father Han Solo was supposed to be the emotional climax of the film. Mm -hmm. If not, not the action climax, but the emotional climax of the film that's all kind of really built to this. And for me, the scene felt flat. Why? Because as we joked about earlier, there was more emotional connection established between Poe Dameron and BB-8 than there was. If they had just taken 30 seconds outside of the rubble of uh, Maz Katana's uh, destroyed castle, carrying Ray. where they yeah. come face to face for a moment and even speak for 10 Anything. seconds, yeah. something, instead, this is the first time we've seen Kylo Ren and Han Solo together. And so when he kills him, I know as an audience member, they're trying to set me up to feel this big emotional moment of the son killing the father. But because they hadn't done nothing, like even a short conversation to introduce that concept to me, it's like it's just started now and now it just ends. And so while I get it, it worked in the terms of I now accept that Kylo Ren has fully given himself to the dark side. I got that, and at that level it worked. But where it failed was that the emotional oomph of the scene that I was supposed to feel as an audience member, it did not do it for me because I felt no connection between the two dudes. Right. 100% agree with John. And one fix, it's not my theory, it's our buddy JT from Shamoz. His theory is, what if Han and Leia thought their son was dead? And that was the moment that Han learned. My that son's would have alive. Something too. Some stakes, race right. stakes. I agree with John. Scene was fine. Han Solo's my favorite character. I did react, it was emotional, but there was it was an emotional moment that was actually more exposition you you reacted more with chewie's reaction oh when chewie got angry when chewie flew the falcon for the first time to rescue ray and chewie at the end that's when i had the ugly tears don't yeah. you think leia should have hugged chewie yes she she hug chewie. no at the end when no, like, at the end at the end oh. after like his best friend has been oh, killed yeah, it's like yeah, i felt yeah. like she hugs ray which is cool too but just a little acknowledgement of the you know, uh -huh. the pain that Chewie's right. going I through. I don't need a Qui-Gon Jinn funeral, but in story, I would have liked some moment to mourn Han. With Han. Especially yeah. with Chewie. Yeah. I would have liked Especially, to... it's the no metal thing all over again. Well, well, she... No respect <laughs> given to Chewie's. His lifelong partner <laughs> right. has just died. Nobody and, gets hungry. Like, it's and it's not it. too late. Episode 8 could begin with the, 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 the Han morning Solo's of funeral. The, the, Han Solo's funeral. One point, I, I, well, I, to, I know we got to keep moving, but uh, the resistant fighters probably don't know Han as much. They're like, isn't that Leia's ex-husband? What's he doing here? Like, there's some of that stuff in there right. too. Well, but he's, still general, general, he's still general. general soul. Soul. Yeah, but there's some of, of the that. Rebellion. But Come also, on. also it's established. It's a character point with Leia. I call her the Paul McCartney of things. Lennon dies. McCartney goes in the studio to record a song that very day. Leia's business like it's established. I think it was a gaffe in Lucas's script. But Alderaan blows up, and she's like, "Well, that sucks. Let's move on." Yeah. So there's a little bit of Leia. There's a mission to go on. Yeah. I think that was. Well, I think yeah. and so so we, and. We talk about the actual the actual battle again, very reminiscent episode of four. Poe showing exactly what he what he's being able to do, and they, and they take out the planet. Um, it, it certainly looks. I mean, Phasma gets thrown into a, a garbage dump. We'll, we'll find out how she survives. Snoke makes sure, hey, go get Kylo, get him out of there. Um, looks like to, I want to complete his training. That's an interesting thing. Yep. I want to see Kylo maybe Ren. turn him Sith. Maybe turn him proper That's, Sith. Yeah. I want to see Kylo Ren come back even more powerful yeah. and less emotional because people are like, oh well, he's you know he's whining and everything, and he and he's more Anakin than less Vader. I want to see him transition yeah, and become he Vader. Well, he'll be a Darth something. Become right? that's what I'm saying. I'd like to see him become a Darth. Like to see that to see what Kylo Ren becomes because he's a more formidable opponent next time they do face that he maybe this time he's the one that just destroys Rey when she who knows. And I want to see a battle between Snoke and Luke. Yeah, that, that's what those are the things that I'm looking forward to as far as um, episode 8 goes, but how about you, Schnapp? What are you looking forward to seeing after seeing this and now going into episode 8? Well, you just drew up an interesting question for me, like Kylo Ren. He's not called Darth anything ever. Well, he's not a Sith. And he's, he's, a master, master, and he's, he's the master of the Knights of Ren. Right. Right. right, but he's not a Sith. And, and Snoke says to complete his training, could Snoke, if he is... Plagueis. Plagueis. Could, could he, he reveal himself as Plagueis Could he now? also already have another Sith and be like, in order for uh, you to actually become... There do always have to be two. Yeah. Yeah. He already has a Sith, and he's like, maybe I don't trust Darth S Scrimby Scram, and I need Penny Kylo Ren to be... You know, Scrimby gonna... Scram is canon now. Yeah, so. Scrimby, <laughs> Darth Scrimby <laughs> Scram, if you look him up, you'll see him inside the visual book. Um, well, yes. he, he, might, he, he might be saying, look, he's revealed himself to awesome, have these actually. powers now. I need him on my side. I'll complete his training so he can take out this dude who I've had for a while. But they're always backstabbing each other. That's what yeah. the Sith do. They're like, oh, you have power just like Kylo Ren is like, join it's me and the then I'll rule. get him. Yeah, like so. one to have the power and one to crave it. Yeah. That's the rule. So I, I'm looking forward to uh, finding out more about Rey 
and Luke, obviously, that's the biggest, the biggest right. oh, by mystery. Far, that's right. the so, biggest question. Mark, and I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what is, what is the First Order now that they've destroyed the, the what was it, the Hosnian Prime Galaxy with you the Star it. Killer. I mean, do they have another Star Killer? I hope the what third movie it, right? of this doesn't have a half built, half built <laughs> planet. Right. You know, come on. But uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to Ryan, Ryan Johnson's uh, depiction of this. Yeah. Uh, of this of this Star Wars universe, I mean, I think JJ just gave him a lot of cool toys to play with. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it more than ever. All right, so John, the movie ends out now with Ray approaching Luke on on this you know, Skelly Michael Island, which we've been talking yep. about forever too. And it's that scene, regardless if it's his daughter, if it's his star pupil, whoever it might be, and she's got that saber and that last very samurai shot of Luke, and it's apparently a gravestone that I never picked up too. There's a, mm. there's a grave I'm there still not. Too. I see somebody pointed that out I after I that. saw the first time. Yeah. So I watched for it the second time Didn't and I saw it, it oh, you did. but I I'm still not it, it could be it could be a great right. has seeing the stone I was not convinced I, I was it didn't either. stand out to me as clearly being a great so tell sorry. me as far as what you want to see happen with those two characters and in general in episode eight well first of all I thought I think the moment I don't even know if Luke realized that that lightsaber was still around and understanding that's the lightsaber I fought my father with, that yeah. my father yeah. cut my hand off. This is the lightsaber Ben gave me. Yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff. So that was great. Clearly the movie's going to pick up there. At least I kind of hope it does. They could pull... A couple um, years later. And Empire Strikes Back, yeah. where three years have passed since, you know, whatever. That's fine. Uh, maybe they say three years have passed and just three years, Luke and Ray have been on that island together alone and training, he's training her, whatever, maybe. Um, so... This is the greatest thing. This is the greatest thing. I have no freaking idea where they're going. Yeah. And that's the best thing in the world. I love that. I mean, we're going to get an answer about, or we might not, um, about a lot of different questions. But yeah, I want to see Snoke reveal himself as Plagueis. I want to see Kylo now on the path to becoming a full-fledged, the rebirth of the Sith. I want to see that back. Because ultimately, that's far more dangerous to the galaxy than any Starkiller base, mm -hmm. um, the technological terror you've constructed. Um, so I think those are things you want to see. Otherwise, Ryan, show me what you got. Just whatever you want to give us. Give it to me. I'm ready. Can Can I, oh, um, after the fourth viewing, you realize that that gravestone is actually Biggs Dark Lighter. It's, uh, <laughs> it's um, John, you're right, and, and here's what we talked about. Um, this movie, one of the biggest, biggest criticisms, it's a rehash, or they just did a lot of stuff. They took stuff from New Hope, Empire, and Jedi. They rolled it into one. I think Kasdan came back to correct some errors in Jedi, right. and um, that's out of the way now. Yeah. Ryan Johnson, you have the entire galaxy. You don't have to hit these points anymore. Just paint, Artiste. Just paint. Just paint. Uh, we're definitely going to get Luke and Ray. I want. There's a power vacuum again. The First Order destroyed every political rival they had in their way. They're in control now, but also admit there might be other groups that pop up, right. but I really, really want the, the the journey of Ren to be more evil. Yeah. I don't want this about him turning good yet, maybe in 9, maybe in 10, 11, and 12, who knows, um, but I want this be about him proving to Snoke, no, I'm the rightful right-hand man, and I think there's going to be someone else, Benicio right. Del Toro, someone else, that Ren has to fight along with maybe going after Luke and Ren, but he has to prove to Snoke because he wants to, no, I'm your choice. Right. So it could be like a little Suicide Squad supervillains yeah, fighting even more well, supervillains. Well, you're saying though, so didn't the new or the uh, Republic though? They weren't all taken out though. Generally speaking, from what it's set up, but again, C three PO said like, we, like there, there's others, but but the the seat of the way it's set up now is the new Republic. They took things off Coruscant to as a sign of good faith, and they they by election not just elected the Chancellor. And there's the Chancellor Vilchem is the guy with this his beard yeah. is blown in the wind, uh, the alien creature. They move the capital around now. So the capital was there in Hosnian Prime, and that's where the fleet was. And so basically all the ruling parties of the New Republic are gone. And the resistance is just, it, it's an under, it's black water in the Middle East. It's, it's underfunded. That's why they only have X-Wings. They only have ragtag. It's like a Battlestar Galactica fleet. So uh, are there remnants of the New Republic left? I'm sure. But all the power structure was kind of taken out on those five Here's a lines. question I have for Episode Eight. Like, they have not in any of the six movies, and including this one, this Seventh one is the first time they ever used any kind of a flashback sequence, right. and that was the use of her touching that lightsaber, and it triggered like a force flashback is the best way I can right. describe it. Could they use that now that they've introduced that in this seventh movie for Luke to explain to Rey why, whether or not she's a Skywalker or not, why she, her memory was blanked? Because obviously she was there. She's seeing stuff. 
that whether or not she participated in it, that's what this lightsaber is showing her. The lightsaber didn't participate in it. That was like Luke's cut off hand floating right, around yeah. in outer space for whatever until it landed somewhere. I think it's just the force showing her things because I think the force wanted to push her to Luke. Because mm -hmm. one of the things Maz said is like, look, those people who dropped you off, they ain't coming back. That's not happening. But there's something else out there for you. And I think the force- She said Luke, but she, but, and then Ray says Luke. No, I don't think so. Watch this. I'll watch it a third yeah. time. Third I'm, time. I'm pretty yeah. positive. But, but I will. Yeah. Think, but she says, there's something else out there. And I think whether she says Luke or not, I think the force is trying to push her to Luke. I think the force needs her trained by Luke and the yeah. force wants her trained by Luke. Um, and I think I think that was more the force doing that than the lightsaber itself. All right. right. I'm just questioning. Are we done with seeing any flashbacks of Kylo Ren and Han so. and Leia? Who knows? I mean, it's definitely a JJ tool. So whether or not Ryan Johnson does it, we'll see. I think if, if they do, it'll be through storytelling, not through the Force touching the saber. That'll show you. It'll be Luke sitting down and telling right. her the story. Right, right, right. All right, that is the last episode of 2015 of Collider Jedi Council, and what a year it was. A lot of great moments, and what a way to end it with The Force Awakens full breakdown conversation. I'd like to thank the council first. He is the producer of Screen Junkies. He is the Sarlacc pit boss himself, Kylo Ken Knapsack. Where can the good people find you? You can follow me at Ken Knapsack, and a lot of people uh, listen to me on Jedi Lines back in the day, and they say, hey, we missed you talking about Star Wars. I'm still doing it. I'm doing it every week on a podcast feed called Force Center with Joseph Grimshaw and Jennifer Landa. Give it a listen and a like. We we get to do this nerd talking all the time, and it's a great time to do it. Well, he's the ultimate sweaty. He is Boba Schnapp. Boba, where can I find you? You guys can uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnapp. And you can find my non-Star -Star Wars related documentary, The Death of Superman <laughs> Lives. What happened? It's totally canon, it's guys. Totally canon, it's totally yo. canon, yo. Uh, it's on uh, the website, tdoslwh.com. Please pick it up. You can get a digital download over the holidays and sweat it up. So, uh, support an independent film. I'll see you later. And sitting next to him, it's Obi John Kenobi, John Campia. Where can the good people find you? You guys can find me on Facebook and on Twitter, simply at John Campia. Keep your eye open for my first novel, The Pride, coming out very soon. And and I'll let you know where and when you can grab that. Okay, guys. Now, for me, I'm Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff. You find me at Christian Harloff on both Twitter and Instagram. And keep on submitting those Star Wars questions. I love talking to you about Star Wars. But also, have your voice heard in this comment section right here. Any things that you theor theories, have the conversation. This is where you guys can not be those guys in a movie talk going, hey, guess what? Han Solo dies. Here you can have every mm -hmm. conversation you want about Force Awakens. Have it. Enjoy it. Talk to your fellow Star Wars fans in these comments section, and then we'll be back in January talking Star Wars. May the Force be with you. Always. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.